Willkommen, willkommen, willkommen to Austria, the Fieber Brune Pro. It is the Free Ride World Tour by Peak Performance, and we are live here in Fieber Brune. So excited. Fieber Brune, located in Easy Hop from International Hubs. Fieber Brune has been hosting free ride competitions for 20 years. This is the anniversary, and 15 of those years being free ride world tour events. This historic venue blends the mountain culture of Austria with hardcore free ride and is a true test of FWT riders. My name is Derek Foos. I'm here with Anna Smoothie, and we are live at the Fieber Brune Pro Anna. What's the feeling out there today? Well, it's uh, a lot of excitement this morning. We've been sitting around for a couple of days waiting for the weather and the conditions to play ball, and now they are, and it's officially a race to beat the high cloud and get the competition done while the conditions are looking awesome. Yes, we are a green light for the Fieber Brune Pro, and we are so excited for it. It's been a roller coaster leading up to this of different snow conditions, different weather conditions, but as you can see, the Vilti Loader face has come to play. We've got a light dusting of new snow, and we are fired up. The riders have been through it. The emotions have been all over the place leading up to this. Absolutely. We've been here for a few days, and it's been tricky to get um, a good look at the face with lots of cloud um, shrouding the Wiltsy Loader. But this morning we see it in all its glory, and uh, she's looking good for a great contest. Oh, yeah, the Fieber Brune Miracle delivering once again. We've seen the view straight out of the start gate. It is steep, and it is a long way down there. The riders have their work cut out for them. There's a reason that this is a final stop. The face is bigger. The stakes are higher. Everything to play for here. Such an exciting day in Fieber Brune. And, uh, wow, I'm just I'm ready. I'm ready to see what the riders have in store for us. Yeah, we've just been watching a couple of forerunners come down and understand that there's some nice dense pack powder at the top. Um, we'll have a good look at that shortly. But yeah, the riders have been watching old footage, scoping out their lines and just getting ready for a big day here in Fieberbun. Yeah, so many factors go into this with the riders. The mental state, the physical state, the condition of the snow, the weather, the light. There's all kinds of things that they have to go through to put themselves in the right headspace to compete here for finals. We've got a, a huge day two runs in store, so we're really excited to see how the strategy options are going to play out. There's a lot of different ways the riders can approach it, and uh, I, for one, am pretty excited to see what they're going to do with this phase today. Yeah, I have been checking in with some riders on that two-run format, whether they'll do, uh, use it to train one specific line and ski it twice, or to try something completely different. I think there's some variation through the crowd, so... I'm excited to see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been skiing and riding around the resort for the last few days for uh, for a few of us pretty much since we left Georgia. So we've definitely gotten to know Fieberbrunn very well. The Salback region, you know, has been as I said, played host to this. It's the 20th anniversary of competitive free ride here in Fieberbrunn, and 15 of those have been free ride world tours. So pretty historic face on the tour. It's a historic face and a very warm welcome from the Fieberbrunn uh, community. It's been awesome to hang out here. We have had some stormy weather, so we've been hanging out around the Schloss Castle Hotel, chasing ghosts down those hallways, but uh, now the skies have opened. All right, well, let's dig into what got us here. Our competition format, it's not complicated, but there's a lot of moving parts uh, that, that go into the Free Ride World Tour, a couple of different stages. The preliminary stage included the Verbier Pro, the Kicking Horse Golden BC Pro, and of course, the Georgia stop that was brand new. We had 53 riders in the mix, and then uh, they took two of your best two of the three results, and that made the cut, and the cut is ruthless. Half the riders have gone back back to the challengers, back home to try again, and 27 athletes making the FWT finals. The points are higher, the stakes are higher, there are championship titles at stake, everything to play for in Fieberbrunn. So it's a very, very exciting time, and uh, wow, I, I'm just, I'm so impressed that the Fieberbrunn miracle has kicked in yet again. Yeah, the, the hope certainly skyrocketed this morning when we, when we looked up and saw that the competition was on. So now we're all just full focus on getting this one off the ground. 
Yes, exciting times in Fieberbrunn. The local organizing committee has been hard at work. You know, it's been, as I said, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, I got a chance to ride the face twice in the last few days, and the first time last Friday, it was lovely. And then went up again on Sunday, and we had the Foon, that hot wind that uh, that can blow through from the Sahara, and it changed things completely. So luckily, we've had some fresh snow in the last couple of days, including last night, a bit of an unforecasted flurry, which was a lucky break, I'd say, for for us and for the riders so exciting uh it, oh, yeah it's just it's on yeah We're and green light i think uh, as the the face has multiple aspects um and it's quite a long face actually there's going to be some differing snow in different parts of the face so up top we understand there's some dense pow down low it has been affected by the rain and refrozen but um that means they're going to be coming out hot of those uh, runs. So the Vilti Loader has a rich history of competitive free ride, and we had a chance to catch up with the riders to dig into that history. It's hard to prepare for how it feels standing in the start gate. It's a huge mountain, like the biggest mountain that I will have ever competed on for sure. The history and legacy of these faces, you know, there's been so many amazing runs. Trying to add to that legacy is something that would be nice to achieve. Exposure is probably the biggest thing. The venues are on another level. It has a super technical top part where you can really show your free riding skills. And then you have more playful zone, so it makes a really complete venue. You actually need quite a bit of experience on this face. Well, you just get a sense of how the riders feel about the history and the legacy of this face. It's such an intense mountain to ride, and so many memorable, historic moments have taken place on the Vilti Loader. I think they all feel like there's some big shoes to fill for them. Certainly, there's some serious exposure on this face, and there's also some playful features down the bottom. It's quite a complete venue in terms of the big mountain and freestyle balance, and we've seen over the, over the years some incredible runs from people all across the world so I think the riders today are hoping to add to that list yeah absolutely there's there's just so many different ways you can go it's it's a really vast broad face so there's a lot of different line options um, snow conditions of course playing a part in the decision-making process for the riders to choose whether they go way riders left or riders right or right down the middle um, and, and some of those like legacy features the house of cliff the eagle you know that we've just been talking about and watching and, and seeing some of the most uh, highlight reel worthy action for years and years and years all in play on this face here at the Fieberbrunn Pro. Oh, it's going to be a big day today of free ride. Indeed. So we're going to check out the face in detail. We've just heard about how the riders feel about it. It's certainly a big kahuna in the eyes of the uh, athletes there. Um, here we go. So we've got two starts today up at 2,118 meters, we have start one on the more north facing aspect of the Wiltsy Loader. Start two is just a little bit below and the terrain here is more east facing. So we can imagine this is gonna soften up first of all. Across the whole face, we have an average gradient of 36 degrees with some of the steeper sections pushing into 48 or even 50 degrees. So some seriously steep terrain there. With a vertical drop of almost 600 meters, let's hope the riders have some serious gas in the tank for today's two-run format. We understand that the temperatures have adversely affected the snow in the lower half of the pit face, so there might be a bit of refrozen uh, rain crust there. Yeah, a, a little bit of everything. You can see there from the shot on your screen that canyon. Everything from that elevation and below is pretty much refrozen and it's got a skiff of snow on top but the riders are definitely going to be they're going to need to be on their game in order to control speed manage direction and especially if they're trying to hit features in that area because it is it's it's 
it was very wet, and now it's locked down solid. So definitely, uh, you know, a, a lot of interesting factors. The weather today, it's one degree currently at 8.15 this morning, 34 Fahrenheit, 5 Ks, just a light breeze from the northeast. Three snowflakes out of five, so we're we're looking decent. I'd say the, the snow conditions out there, um, as you said, Anna, it, it's a range for sure. We've got a, we've got really nice at the top, dense pack powder, and then it, it changes. And there's some wet slide debris uh, from earlier on when we had, well, wet snow um, that, are, uh, that are sitting in a few places that the riders are going to need to be really on point, looking ahead on their runs to make sure they're able to avoid because we don't want to see any runs gobbled up by, uh, by crashing into avalanche debris. Certainly. I think the riders will need to be quite responsive and maybe a bit light on their feet as they're testing the snow as they move through the face. Yeah, one of the things we saw from the forerunners is on the rider's left side in the Hustle Cliff area, the snow was deeper than expected. We actually saw a forerunner going going over forward uh, front punching in the deeper snow. So it was good. I mean, that's why it's so critical to have those forerunners so the riders can get a sense of what the snow is like. Because they are, if you don't know, if you're new to the sport, they're going into this completely without having put a ski or snowboard on the face. So the entire inspection is done visually through binoculars, so there's a huge amount of information to be gathered from those forerunners, and I'd say they were gobbling that up when, they're, when those forerunners went today. And we've had some legendary forerunners who they've watched through binoculars, ride through the face, seeing the different snow fly up or not. Uh, and then those forerunners have given them a, a visual kind of account of their experience on the face so that the riders can fine tune what they're doing, what they're going to ski today on the Viltsy Loader face. Well, it sounds like we're going to get an opportunity to actually look at what the forerunners did today. We've got the footage in the can and we're able to share it with you. So this is Flo Orley. Flo was a standout on the Freeride World Tour. He's our live announcer on the show today. He'll be out there hyping the crowd up, but also a forerunner. So this is above the eagle area. So you can see him kind of scratching his way through the rocks and then exiting with a bit of pace and a bit of spray coming off the board. So that's a good sign for the riders. That's, you know, when they're watching these forerunners. And then here we go. We've got one of our ski forerunners putting in the track to this George Rodney hip up at the top. Perfect backflip. The riders, that, that would have really got their spirits up. This was a crucial move for the riders to see. They were wondering whether there was enough of a lip on that top hit that he took. So I think they were delighted to see that that really works. Yeah, exactly. And then right around here is where things get a little iffy. You can see some of those roller balls. And if you're in the smooth snow, now this is our rider who went over to the rider's left side. A little bit, uh, you know, it's dense snow out there. And then approaching the Hoysel Cliff, takes off and watch here as the skis dig in and over he goes. So while, of course, we prefer successful foreruns, that provides a ton of information to the riders when they're looking at the forerunners on, on the face. Absolutely. I think a little bit more speed and uh, off that cliff and you might have a firm landing. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, you, you set your legs differently when you're expecting to land in soft, soft snow versus landing in hard snow. Um, so uh, we, we saw that with Stan Ray back at the Kicking Horse event. He said he was expecting to land on a very firm surface and he ended up going in up to his thighs. Um, um, so kind of similar, maybe not quite as extreme an example uh, there from our forerunner. But there you're seeing the riders are making their way across to the start. We've got the snowboard men dropping first today. We had a little shift, a little switcheroo in the start order. Originally, it was going to be ski women starting first. And then, um, you know, with the with the strange weather and, and differing snow conditions, it was decided between the organizing committee and the uh, PFB, the Professional Riders Board, that snowboard men would go first because if there was a crust they were going to be able to maybe handle it a little bit easier on one plank versus two. That was the call of the day. Lolo Bess, our FWT commissioner, has been having a great time out there testing the snow and he was adamant that the snowboard field would absolutely smash it first out of the gate. 
Yeah, give a little inspo to the other riders. We are looking at two different starts today. Start two there on your screen. That's just above the Heusel Cliff. And then start one directly at the summit of the Vilti Loader. So riders have their option, whichever one they want to start from, uh, depending on the line they've selected. And one thing that was interesting from chatting with the riders, a lot of them weren't really that locked in last night on where they were going to ride, what they wanted to do. Um, I think a lot of those decisions being deferred to this morning to, to wait to see what the forerunners uh, kind of looked like. Yeah, I think that was quite symptomatic of the fact that we haven't been able to have a really clear look at the Viltie Loader this week. We've been, it's kind of been shrouded in clouds, um, which has left a bit of a, a, a kind of a mystery and also not a totally clear run of a forecast today. It meant yeah. that the riders were like, are we doing it? Are we not doing it? Yeah, there were definitely, it, it felt like even last night, more questions than answers uh, coming into this. So a lot of the riders either unclear on whether the comp was happening at all, which it is, if you're just tuning in. We are a green light for the Fever Burn Pro. Um, and yeah, as well, like, it was really hard to see the face in the, in the previous days. There were big fog banks and lots of cloud, um, you know, some, some snow days. And even when you could see it, it was hard to get detail because it was so gray. Yeah, there's been a lot of flat light floating around, but today we've got a beautiful view of this incredible face. And I think the riders will be just fine tuning their lines as they head on up to the top. So checking out the views there of the competition setup we have here in the valley. I hear there's hot tubs. If anyone has brought their swimsuit up to watch the Fieberbrunn Pro. Well, we have the riders, we have all of the staff, and then, of course, we have our judges that have their work cut out for them in this field. So we put together a nice little piece to help catch you up on exactly what goes into judging at the Freeride World Tour. Hi, my name is Bertie Denevo. I'm one of the Freeride World Tour judges. We score riders from zero to 100. When the rider leaves the gate, he has a score of 50. And then the score goes up or down, depending on what we see. There are five judging criterion. The number one criterion is the choice of line. We'll judge whether the line was difficult or not and whether the athlete did the best out of his line choice. Then there's air and style. How big is the jump? How many are there? Were there tricks in the air? Was the rider in control in the air? How were the landings? The landings are part of the jump. Then there's fluidity. We judges are here to decide whether the athlete was really fast or kind of slow compared to how exposed or how difficult it is to ski. Then there's control. Here we'll judge whether the rider was in control at all times. Then there's technique. For pros, we don't really judge their technique, but we might take off some points if they side slip in a place where another rider was taking turns. The score, like a temperature, will go up and down so that we have a score in our heads when the rider crosses the finish line. All right there, well, digging in to the judging criteria, the five categories, all of them equally important, you know, control for sure. That's what the, the judges are looking for. You put a hand down, a butt down, your back down, control score goes into the basement. Line score, I mean, all of them pretty much critical. Definitely. There's lots of uh, big features on the face today, so I think Aaron Style is going to come into play. It's a bit more of a serious big mountain venue up top, and then down low there's lots more playful features but also the trickiest snow. So let's see how control and air and style interact um, yep. in those overall scores. Yeah, it's been a bit of a delicate balance there with the, with the combo of the big mountain versus progressive freestyle. And it's been fascinating to watch the evolution and now see a lot of these riders are, are not choosing one or the other. They're putting the freestyle element into those true big mountain lines, which feels, you know, like, the evolution. Dangerous. Yeah. 
dangerously exciting and and so much fun to watch. So these riders are truly the best. You know, they've been pared down from a from a field of 57 now to just or 55 now to just 27. So it is truly the best of the best here in the FWT finals. And and there there is not a person on any of these start lists that could not win today if it's their day. You did, right. And we've got quite an interesting mix of experienced veterans like the Swedes, such as Christopher Tudell, Hedvig Vessel, uh, and some rookies that are pushing through with some real determination. So I'm really interested to see how on this big venue, the rookies and the veterans will kind of go head to head. Big time, yeah. The uh, the ski women, the rookies, have been just running the table. I mean, Astrid Shalus and Manon Loski, those two young ladies, just firing right out of the gate. You know, showing no signs of of nerves or or rookie jitters or anything like that. Just just moving the needle in uh, in the sport of competitive free ride, which has just been so exciting to watch. So you can see here the riders loading up in the LZ to get in the helicopter because of the two run format. The organizers electing to fly everybody to the start to keep things moving today. We've got a lot of action stacked up and the riders need to be on point to get to the top, to get their runs, because it is a pretty small field. It is a small field, but we do have a looming bank of cloud um, across the valley there. So we really want to get things done and dusted um, before that arrives at the Wiltsy Loader. That's right, yeah. Light is absolutely critical for these riders to be able to see the nuances of the snow and of the features that they're hitting. So if it goes full gray or if we get a cloud bank on the face, which we've had here before, we've had some delays. We're hoping today that we're not going to see that, but it, it's really important that they can see well, especially with the tricky snow conditions the way they are. Yeah, as that snow changes from different aspects and elevations, uh, it's really important for the riders to be able to see exactly what the snow is looking like right in front of their skis and snowboards. Manon Lowski there, our current ski women ranking leader, wearing that fire bib. It's, uh, it's just been an incredible journey for Manon coming in. Last year she was qualified but wasn't able to take the start because she was injured. And so this year, uh, there was a lot of expectation, I'd say, coming coming behind Manon. That's safe to say. Uh, <laughs> and uh, And also safe to say that she has completely lived up to the hype. You know, after a year off missed to injury, to be able to come back and be be just at the absolute tip top forefront of free ride in this stacked field of veterans has just been an incredible journey for, for Manon. So excited to see what she's got in store for us today as well as all of the riders uh, on the start list. As we said, we've got a whittled down group. So our first riders are gonna be snowboard men. They are getting set to kick things off. John Powell, Jonathan Penfield will be the first man out of the gate. And then each category is gonna run once. Then we roll it over again. Run two, the best score counts. So a tricky day for the judges because they're having to judge first runs against second runs. So the memory recall, of course, they've got video assets that they can use and, uh, and I'm sure they're gonna be leaning on those ones today. Big jobs only for the judging booth, but I think they've, they've got amazing experience and they've done it before. So I have all the faith that they will um, make an excellent job today. Yeah, so let's take a look at who they are. Who is sitting in that judging tent, making the decisions for the riders. We have here our crack crew of judges, some of the most experienced names in the game. Laurent Lolo Bess, the commissioner in partnership with Bertie Denevode, uh, Lolo from France, Bertie from Switzerland. Then we've got uh, IFSA honed Michelle Manning riding out of Salt Lake City and Laurent Larry Gauthier out of Whistler, BC. He was a standout on the Freeride World Tour himself, including a podium at the Extreme Verdier. And then, of course, we've got Dodo, our, uh, our esteemed video judge. So those are, the, uh, those are the folks making the decisions, putting the numbers down, and, and basically deciding who are going to be at the top, who are going to be at the bottom. So we are going to take a quick break. The FWT Fieberbrun Pro will be right back after this short break. No.
Welcome back to the Free Ride World Tour by Peak Performance. This is the Fieber Brune Pro. I am Derek Foos. I am joined by Anna Smoothie. We're going to be bringing you the call all day long, two run format, stop one in the FWT finals, all to play for here. Yeah, the riders are fired up to have some decent snow and weather conditions today, and we're excited to get this competition off the back, starting out with snowboard men. Yes, snowboard men are the first category of the day. You can see Clara there, our uh, lovely starter. She's going to be kicking the riders out of the gate, forcing them down the mountain. Let's take a look at where we're sitting in the overall rankings. Victor De La Rue with a stranglehold on things, 20,000 points. In fact, with the best two of three format, he threw away a first place finish. John Penfield, though, he is in touch. And if things, both he and Timmy Schroeder, if things go exactly mathematically right, still have a shot at that overall title. But Victor De La, Ru De La Rue, I cannot imagine, is going to let go of things easily. Victor, is uh, he's a proven champion on, well, so far, every single venue. Here is our start list for the day. So we have got last year's winner, Jonathan Penfield, kicking out of the gate first of all, followed by Holden Sam Samuels and Michael Morn. Our current leader, Victor De La Rue, is coming in fifth position, and it's rounded off by Liam Rivera. Yeah, such a heavy hitting start list here. Every one of these riders is uh, is well placed to to put down a win. But I really have to say that Victor is the one in the driver's seat right now. He has just put on a commanding performance across all venues, all snow conditions, um, every single place we went. Win, win, win so far. And he just, he seems really comfortable. So here is our peak performance, fun bet, fan favorites. 97% of you voting that Victor De La Rue is going to land on the podium today. Liam Rivera with a 65% nod. And John Pow, Jonathan Penfield, backing it up with 45% of you feeling like he is going to come out somewhere on the box today. Peak performance, fun bet, it's your opportunity to get in the game. It's fantasy free ride. We love the fun bets on the Free Ride World Tour staff, and I hope you do too. Obviously, lots of people thinking that Victor De La Rue is also looking extremely strong, coming back from injury almost a year ago, uh, but certainly hasn't seemed to hold him back this season. Not one little bit, and if you were in Vegas, I think the odds against Victor taking a win here would be extremely low. He is just, uh, you know, one thing that's really impressed me about Victor, his pedigree is big mountain, big lines. That's that's the heritage. Um, you know, it's his brother's legacy, but he's got certainly his own legacy, legacy to stand on. But what's been so impressive with Victor is every face we've gone to from early in the season on the Petit Bac in Verbier to a, a smaller and, you know, arguably more playful face in Kicking Horse, Victor just finds the line. He finds a way to do it. He always adds something extremely spicy at the very top, which just grabs the judges by the collar and gets their attention right away. You know, on that thermometer system, of course, if you get hot right out of the gate, then you're probably going to stay hot. So Victor's just managed to find time after time after time the, the combination of the ultimate line and then executing it to perfection. So really hard to get a bet, uh, to bet against the man today. Indeed, but Jonathan Penfield is first out of the gate, and I think he had such a creative line last year that I'm super excited to see what he does today. All right, well, speaking of the man, he is in the gate. It's John Pow, Jonathan Penfield. He is on course now, the regular foot rider out of Squamish, kicking things off here for the Fever Brune Pro. Hopping out of start one and making his way down the rider's left section. Um, the snow here is apparently dense, pal. He's managing to ride with some serious pace above all that exposure. Catching yeah. some air there. Such an aggressive start for John Powell, getting right into it as he comes back off this wind lip with a 360 and now coming down to what has become known as the Penfield transfer, executing perfectly John Powell, getting things started off with a bang. That was the move we loved so much last year, and he's done it again, getting the grab in there, ripping his weight down. You see those ice balls here, but he seems to be handling them well. Yeah, catching a grab on that one. This section is extremely chunky there were some wet slides we had a group of people go up and stamp out some of the bigger balls but John Powell making short work of it we rode the gondola with him today and I asked if he was going to do that and, and said you know it's named after you so you probably should and he delivered 
smashing it through those playful features. You can see the snow is not as hard as when we saw the forerunners come down, which bodes well. Yeah, I think the sun having a bit of a positive effect on the snow down low here. This is where it's at its firmest. And that transfer from bright sun to dark shade is tricky for the riders to handle. It goes to extremely flat light down here. So now they're navigating a tricky snowpack without being able to see super well. But John Powell handling it like the veteran he is. And just letting it loose as he gets out onto the smoother, hard, refrozen snow there, making his way through to the finish line. Yeah, that was a great way to start things off. Jonathan Penfield, you know, the riders outside, well, the rest of the riders in this category, but also the riders outside of the category are going to take great solace in that. Watching a, a basically perfectly executed first run is going to bring the rider spirits way up. A solid run there. He has got his mum and his fiance here supporting him this week, and I'm sure they will be cheering loudly and ready to give him a big hug. That's right. Free ride is a family affair. We see here the finish area in beautiful Feverbrun as we look back here, Anna, on John Powell's run. So checking out that backside three, he's looking rock solid. The snow is pretty soft there, and this transfer from the Housel Cliff into that little pyramid triangle, just looking rock solid. Yeah, it looked like he was maybe a half a board length short, but luckily the uh, upper section of that spine was soft snow. You can see there John on the heel side edge having to really work to control his speed. Shutting it down a bit before that lower air and then coming into this section, which was certainly completely locked up an hour ago when we watched the forerunners. It looks like it's softening well. Yeah, I think that lower feature that we saw John Powell uh, hit is going to see quite a bit of action today as it's one of the uh, one of the few in the bottom part that actually actually looked like it might be hittable. All right, well the score coming in and it is a doozy 85-6-7 for John Powell starting us off with a bang. That's a huge score for the first rider out of the gate and the judges showing that they love it. John going to get comfortable in that Dina Star hot seat as he now has the best seat in the house to watch the rest of the action for snowboard men. Yeah, that's a strong statement from the judges with the first rider out of the gate. Well, what an impressive way to start this Fieberbrunn Pro off. And we are going to head back up to the start, and we're going to catch up with Holden Samuels before his run. I think this is one of the most fun-looking faces. You know, you've got, like, the super extreme free ride side. If you go lookers right, and then lookers left is pretty playful and freestyle. So no matter what style you have, you get a little chance to show what you've got. Holden Samuels in the gate, riding out of Salt Lake City. This man has been, become known for ginormous backflips on the Freeride World Tour. He's going to find something huge and send it off there. This is his second season on the tour. He's already holding on to a second place for this season, and Holden is on the venue. Also dropping in from start one on his toe side edge, which is a bit of an advantage to really dig that in as you hit across that exposure, carrying as much speed as he can, catching a little bit of air time there and then lining up this feature. Yeah, Holden getting on top of this blade and opting in for the, uh, the Marion Erti couloir and blasting out through there. So it, interesting, you know, in terms of line choice there, it's nice riding, but he's, uh, it looks like he's lining something up, up higher. There is this wind lip. Is he gonna have enough speed not to get an air? Oh, but he's turning and choosing that as a cliff, a great line option there from Holden. Managing that negative takeoff really well and backside three there, getting straight into a heelside turn, looking pretty solid. Yeah, that was, that was extremely creative line choice from Holden as he's now moving through this flatter section. The Wiltsy loader, 500 meters of vertical, but it does offer a little bit of a respite, a little bit of a break in this middle section where it benches out before the riders get back into the action. And Holden right into it here above this big exposure on top of the gully. Lining up one of these little bobbles here. 
catching quite a lot of air and lacing some turns through, lining up another cliff here. Yeah, Holden chipping that one off. This is smart riding from Holden Samuels. The snow in this lower section, extremely challenging. It's rock hard with just a skiff of powder on top. So if you do see the rider slowing down in that section, there's good reason for it. If you go in there fast, you are not going to be able to control your speed coming out of it. So a smart riding there as Holden navigates that lower mountain creek uh, coming out of the exit of the Vilti Loader. And another clean run from the snowboard men. So far, so good in this category. This is going to get the rest of the riders fired up that they're managing to make it through. That Everyone's been a little bit worried about the snow conditions and Holden and Jonathan have just showed us that it is very much doable. All right, well, we take a look back here at Holden Samuels airing into the couloir. Riding through so beautifully and then finding his first airs over on the eastern aspect of the Viltzi Loader face. Yeah, you, can, oh. you can see on the judges bar the line score a little bit lower and that could be a bit of a result of opting to not hit any features on that upper section and ride out that couloir instead. But then making up for it down here, tweaking out that method. Love to see it. You can see here how his board's bouncing around in that challenging snow at the bottom. Yeah, I think we'll see a few riders taking it easy in this bottom section from the channel downwards today. Yeah, that is a veteran performance from the young Salt Lake City rider growing up, of course, at Big Sky Resort in Montana. As Holden eyes on the screen there, the, uh, the riders do have access to a screen where they can see the scores drop. So Holden now anxious moments to beat Jonathan Penfield. Uh, he needs 85, 67, 73, 67 for Holden Samuels as he moves into second place. I'll be interested to see Holden's strategy for the second run format. Is he going to let it a bit looser when the, when the snow softens up a bit more? Let's see. Yeah, the strategy game in full effect here on the Viltzi Loader. These two run, the two run format, two run options is our drone just zooming up the half pipe where we famously saw Mikhail Bimbos and then many others follow in his footsteps gapping over that channel. I'll be curious to see if that channel gap goes today. Uh, riders were a little concerned about the speed, but the snow is definitely a lot better than we expected. Yeah, and, the, and yesterday the snow was quite sticky, but since it has refrozen overnight, I think they could catch, catch some serious speed and that channel gap would be actually doable today. Yeah, I think it's possible whether any, I mean, it's easy to say from our seats here <laughs> in the comfy commentator's tent as we head back up to the top, Michael Mon riding out of Bozeman, Montana, sitting in fifth overall right now. He, of course, has had a couple of wins in his time on the tour, both of them coming in Bakira Barret in Spain. This year, ninth, second, ninth. And uh, Michael Mon now on course, smart, sendy riding from this man, as we have come to expect. He's elected to drop in from start two. This aspect has seen more sun earlier today, so it should be softening up. Coming in across the Housel Cliff here, but lining up that pyramid airing in and getting some more air time out looking super solid yeah riding across there on the toe side edge as you said moving this direction on the face a bit of an advantage for the goofy footed riders as michael coming into this wind lip getting that 360 off and now you can see that snow already starting to get affected by the sun as michael sends it off that lower cliff yeah lacing these features together really beautifully snow's looking a bit funky down in this section but he's hopping over some Mini rocks there. Yeah, collecting those line score points. Michael now on the heel side, heading over to this pyramid drop. No, he's, he's going the other way. And the first rider we've seen on the rider's left side of the gully, holding it in the fall line, just full gas as Michael moving across, approaching this lower air. Landing really solid and riding out through those roller balls with no issues, looking super solid. Yeah, Michael's such a strong individual. He's super, super focused on training, and it is a critical aspect to free ride at this level. Strong legs, strong mind, and the rider's able to execute. So another rider with a solid run there. The top section of Michael's run really good. Uh, I mean, well, the whole thing really good. Yeah, he told me he took a bit of a slam about a week ago and was going to dial it back a little for potentially the FIBA run event. But, I mean, that seems like a pretty pretty punchy line to me. Yeah, and laying a deep trench there, heel side carving. That was something. <laughs> that was something. It's always great to catch the rider's thoughts in the finish area as we look back here at Michael Mon's run. 
So he goes past the housel and takes off this pyramid, turns it into a double there, catching a little bit of air and then cruising across for this floaty backside three. Yeah, Mike, the first one to actually make that into a jump, which is great. We've seen that uh, we've seen that play out kind of regularly on the tour, and we wonder because pre-snowfall that was just a bare rock. So it's nice to see this little bit of snow is has turned on some of the features here on the Vilta Loader. Yeah, Michael doing a service to the crew to put in a little ramp there and work on the lip. Yeah, for sure, and I, I'm sure we're going to see many, many riders through the field taking advantage of that now as Michael waiting for his score to drop. He's done his part, now it's up to the judges. And of course, as you Sorry said... Sorry getting so hot on that snow, dude. As you said, with Holden, strategy is going to come into play for run number two. 77, so not quite able to knock John Powell out of the hot seat, but good enough for second so far as we are halfway through the snowboard men's field. But of course, some big hitters still to come. All right, well, we are looking at the big picture, the overall Vilzi Loader face, the top section, as you said earlier, Anna, full big mountain feel, and then the bottom section a little bit more playful. John Penfield right now sitting in first place with that blazing score right out of the gate. Michael Mon in second, and Holden Samuels right now sitting in third place as we are moving through the snowboard men's field here, the Freeride World Tour by Peak Performance. It is the Feberbrun Pro if you're just joining us, and the man in the gate is none other than Timmy Schroeder. He is a rookie on tour. He's already got two podiums to his name, and he is sitting a comfortable third place overall, the regular footed rider out of Innsbruck. Excited to see him drop in there from start one. I think he's been pretty excited to dig into what's more of home territory for him. He's based in Innsbruck, rides this area reasonably often, and is a super experienced free ride competitor despite being a rookie on tour. Yeah, look how steep and gnarly that is from the top. Timmy just putting his hands up, paying homage to the mountain gods as he kicked things off right away with a big air over exposure. So Tim Schroeder buttered buttering across that little section there and spinning into this cool eye. Oh, this is huge. He's already got two moves above exposure as Timmy opting for Holden Samuels. Same couloir line there as he now flying heel side across this section. You know, we saw I, I, the Goofy Riders, I, I'd say, with a bit of an advantage there, going 180. And lining up his next feature, catching some air. But I think you're right, heel side on this aspect is really tricky. Yeah, so bouncy for the riders, and you can see Tim's board just flexing and, and waving over all of those uh, all of those features. So Timmy Schroeder now in the uh, in the middle section, having a little bit of a break as he lines up. This thing has already seen quite a bit of action. Timmy Schroeder with a backflip, perfect landing. Looking solid. I'm sure he's got much more to play with here. Backside three. Doesn't take it too deep. Oh, oh, but going down, the snow is so tricky in this section. Yeah, that was unfortunate there for Tim Schroeder, just dropping into an old track. As he's now coming up above this, you can see how waved that landing is. But Tim Schroeder having no problem with it, getting on that heel side edge, holding on through the flat light, trying to just get back out into the sunshine so he can see again. And cruising through to the finish putting his hands up again. And he, that was a super playful run. Unfortunate to have that little tumble, but he certainly packed a lot of features, a lot of freestyle, a lot of big mountain gnar into that line. Yeah, he sure did. And so much of that run was executed so well. You know, I think coming in... Hey, mama, hey, papa! Let's get up! Coming into run number two, he'll be, uh, he'll be probably feeling pretty good that he can go back, do the same thing, but without nice that bobble and have a huge score. Yeah, so this was a really committed move to take some air right at the top of this exposure here, looking super solid and confident, and then buttering across into the top section. And that 360 at the top of the couloir, really backing himself there. And this for sure, the highlight of Tim Schroeder's run, perfect. And right onto that heel side edge to control the speed. Yeah, and this, Backside three, 
lands it. I think he goes smaller than he thought and just gets a little, his nose digs in there. Yeah, that was unfortunate there for Timmy. Going down on what was previously an absolutely brilliant run. You can see the line tracker uh, similar. You know, the most of the riders we've seen on a very similar track, very similar path as we're waiting now for the judges' scores to drop. Tim Schroeder, he's got a lot of positives to take away from that run. As we see the score coming in, it's climbing. It's going to be a 70, so a solid score, but he knows he can clean that up. We are going to head right into an interview on the mindset of our current leader, Victor De La Rue. All right. Okay, so well, it looks like we're not going to catch up with Victor De La Rue. Instead, we are going to watch Victor De La Rue, and there is a ton to play for here. As we said, he's got three first places already. If Victor finishes on the podium here, he will be world champion. And if he's fourth or fifth, and neither John or Timmy is first, he's still the champion. So Victor has a very good opportunity to take home the world title with one event to spare if things go even remotely his way here on the Vilti Loader. And he is getting things started with an electric drop right out of the gate for Victor. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure to bring into your run, but he's into the action already, spinning into the top of the Housel Cliff there, lining it up. And going for that Penfield gap with a perfect landing. So Victor De La Rue taking, wasting no time getting things off with a bang. He had the 360 up above, another 360 off that wind lift. It just feels like it's Victor's world and the rest of us are living with it. He's making light work of this mountain. Yeah, but it does look tricky to get over there on your heel side, but he's lining up his next air. Bit of a hand down on the landing there. I think condi snow conditions are a little tricky. Yeah, you can see the tail of his board just flexing out as he tried to stay hips over feet and keep that solid. Now Victor De La Rue in the open section approaching this jump where we just saw Tim lay out the backflip. Chucking a 180 in there and regaining composure as he lines up his next feature. Coming in switch with the half cab. So Victor now just playing the freestyle game on this lower section. And I think some wise riding here for Victor as he goes way out into the, uh, well, less snowballed section of the lower face, shall we say. And now letting go of the edges and pinning it across the bottom of the Vilti loader. Another huge performance from Victor De La Rue. Hop in that creek at the bottom. It's a it's a pretty big indentation. And as the sun shadow line moves, we we could see that come into play for some of these riders, but that was a banger for Victor. Playing around as he rips into the finish line. Well, Victor just giving a bit of credit to John Powell there for, for the Penfield gap as we take a look back, Anna, at this run. So front side three there, lining up the big surf turn above the Housel. And then as we see him actually clearing John Powell's bomb hole by about half a board length and almost turning it into a double with that little rock skip underneath. Yeah, he definitely took it pretty huge. Does some switch riding through here. Yeah, nice speed control there. And the half cab. A solid run. I think some uh, some shaky riding as he tried to get across to those features on the right-hand side, but that's just really speaking to the snow. The judges appreciate that the conditions are brutal out there. Yeah, and you could see the judges' bars all maxing out there for Victor De La Rue as he is, uh, well, he's waiting now. Anything on the podium is going to put Victor in the world champion position. 
So this is a big moment. Now, of course, these decisions aren't going to be made now because we do have two runs coming up. So John Powell, if Victor's score goes above it, will have a chance to answer back. Not quite. 83-6-7. So John Powell holding on. This is the first time we've seen Victor in anything other than first after a run. He is going to get an opportunity to go do that again so he could clean up some of those, uh, maybe some of those slower parts. The only thing I could see, maybe a bit of fluidity, you know, when he hopped to switch. Yeah, I, I can appreciate that. And, I mean, he went, I think he went a bit bigger than John Powell, but John Powell perhaps had a bit more finesse and tidiness in his run. As he does. As he does. He is known for exactly that. So here's where we're sitting now. John Penfield in first, Victor De La Rue in second. And I think we're still sitting with Holden Samuels in third. I missed the graphic there, but we will uh, we will follow back up on that as we go back up to the top to Verbier's own Liam Rivera. He was a rookie last year on tour, took his first win at Kicking Horse. Right now he's sitting in fifth overall with a tenth, a sixth, and a third for Liam Rivera as we wait for our last man in the snowboard men's field to drop himself out of the gate onto this intimidating Vilsi Loader face in Feverburn. Dropping in from start one. Shuffling his way across there. Another regular rider, which is not necessarily an advantage from this start position. But already catching some airtime there in a committed position above the huge exposure. And a nice 360 there. Above the exposure, he cannot stress enough how scary that is as Liam now coming over and getting onto this spine above the Hoysel Cliff and opting for the cross court 360. Liam Rivera with a huge move. And looking super solid, carrying some speed out of there. Electing not to take that traverse to the right for those features there. I think he's got something else to play for on the lookers left. Yeah, heading across that slide debris. Looking to get up onto this wall, and he does. It looks like the snow is pretty decent there. Yeah, I think Liam has found the honeypot here on the Vilti Loader face, the best looking snow that we've seen, and he is clearly enjoying it now as he comes into this low section, following some tracks. There's a few good, uh, playful freestyle options down here. Big Becky, but he over rotates slightly and goes down. Oh, he set that so hard. Liam Rivera really pushing the backflip there and a slight, as you said, over rotation. So again, this is where two runs really comes in handy because Liam's top section, magic. And if he can clean that up with that backflip, he may be challenging John Powell for the lead. You can see he's a little bit frustrated there, hands to the head, shaking the head. But you've got one more run, Liam. You can go again. And actually, he will not be in contention for the title at this stage. So oh. kind of takes the pressure off a bit. Yeah, the emotion there from Liam Rivera. Big hug from Michael Mon. These competitors are all oh, compatriots. That was, so, that was so sick, though, dude. Oh. Okay. Oh. dude. Yeah, some moments there. As we take a look back here at Liam's run, he started things off hot at the top. Yeah, coming in with that 360 above the Housel Cliff and finding a pretty cool takeoff here from the biggest section. Front side 360 gets the grab in, lands rock solid, looks so relaxed. Yeah, that was great. And then just handling that slide debris and catching this cross court one with a, with a kind of the boned out, tweaked out grab. Liam Rivera just, you can see on the judges bars, the air and style almost maxed out to the roof. And then he set that back foot. That, that lip, you could see in the track, that lip is almost kinked. It, it kicks up really aggressively. So he's going to need to slow that rotation down to clean that up and, uh, and put himself in position to stand on the podium here in Feverburn today. All right, well, Liam Rivera waiting for the score. I'm sure not going to bother John Penfield, but still solid score there, a 71-3-3. So Liam into fifth place currently in the snowboard men's field, but they are going to get a chance to go again to tidy things up and to have another go on the Vilsi Loader, which is just so exciting to get that second chance. Definitely. I think uh, 
maybe someone who landed a solid run. Oh, let's check out these standings. We've got Jonathan Penfield defending his FIBA run title in first position with our current leader, Victor Delarue, in second position. Michael Morn backing it up in third. Yeah, so, and then Holden, Liam, and Timmy all with, uh, you know, some little issues uh, in all of their runs. So they're gonna, they're gonna go back to the lab see if they can reset the plan, reset the mind. You know, we, we, we haven't talked that much about the mindset it takes to do two free ride runs in a day. It's a big deal. And a lot of the riders kind of struggling with the with how to set their, their heads up. Mentally, but also physically. It's 600 meters almost uh, from the top to bottom there. So that's a, that's a decent run that really gets the legs going. All right, we can take a look back here at John Powell's run that's got him sitting in the Dina Star hot seat after run one of snowboard men. So spinning in there, taking that transfer, just making it, but just riding out so strong and also managing to link together a lot of great features, getting the grabs in there. Yeah, such a solid run. And that has got Jonathan Penfield sitting in first place as we take a look here at what's coming up from Ski Women. All right, welcome back to the Fever Brune Pro. It is the Free Ride World Tour by Peak Performance. We are live at the Vilseloder Face, which is delivering once again. We have just wrapped up Snowboard Men, and we are ready to kick things off with Ski Women. This is where we're standing in the FWT overall rankings. Rookie Manon Lowski riding out of France, sitting on top, but it is tight. Hedvig Vessel is sneaking up on her, and another rookie, Astrid Chalus, in third, Zuza Sibyl, and unfortunately, we don't have Lily Bradley here. She tore her MCL recently while free riding around the Innsbruck area. So we have a slightly reduced field today in the ski women for the finals, but it is really all to play for, and the rankings are tight. So the rookie Astrid Shalus is kicking things off, followed by Zuza Vitek, Hedvig Bissell, Manon Lowski and Sibyl Blanjean rounding things off there in fifth start position. Yeah, such a stacked field. The talent in this in this group of women is just through the roof. And you know, every one of these riders has, has been on a podium or won an event already this year. So extremely, extremely uh, exciting moments here at the Fieberburn Pro to see how it plays out with ski women as we are going to take a look at our peak performance fun bet fan favorites and see exactly who you're feeling today. Uh, it's a hard one. I mean, this, this category, almost more than any other, is just so tight. The standings extremely, extremely stacked up. So 86% of you voting that Hedvig Vessel will land on the podium. Manon Lowski only 1% down with an 85% vote. And Astrid Shalus. So those are your top three riders currently. And, uh, of course, with Astrid tied right now with, uh, with Zuza Vitek. So the peak performance fun bet, fan favorites, you've had your say. We will see what the riders have to say about it as they get set to kick things off. It's interesting, you know, in a couple of categories, we've got some ties in the overall rankings coming out of the preliminary stages of the Free Ride World Tour. So I'm sure that's gonna shake out on the Vilti Loader today. Yeah, it's looking tight, but also we have about 20% more points available for podiums in the FWT finals. So it really gives opportunity for people lower down in the standings to have their say here today. All right, well, we're starting to see some tracks come into play. This far rider's left side gets the most intense sun. As you can see, you know, the rocks look a little bit more cooked. They don't have the, the rime stuck on them in the snow. So we'll see that probably come into play throughout the day as the sun gets its work done on that side of the face. We saw a pretty hefty section of the snowboard men's field riding either the same or very similar lines as we are ready to kick things off with ski women 20 year old astrid shaylus she's got already a win on the, or sorry a couple of podiums on the tour and she is tied for third overall she's heading out to the rider's right yeah she's made a super strong entrance onto the free ride world tour and she was actually here for the challenger series last year 
and won. So that experience on this face is so valuable to the rider. Yeah, that could be a significant advantage for Astrid as she's making her way down now into this extremely steep and exposed section. Going into the lower entrance of the Eagle, this is getting exciting as Astrid Chelus, there is a double here as an extra exit. She skis in and airs out. So Astrid Chelus, the first rider into that section of the day and making clean work of it. Taking a hefty line there. I'm so impressed with the commitment and riding out super strong. Yeah, and that direction of the approach proving to be wise. We saw Elizabeth Gerritsen uh, aiming for that double last year and it really not working out for her. So happy to see Astrid clean and safe out of that section as she's now in this lower section. This is a section uh, where you get to take a breath before the next section of action. Astrid tossing a huge backflip. Backslap, but she's on her feet and that was a sick one, laid it out super nicely. Yeah, it looks like she might have taken a knee to the face there on that landing as Astrid now trying to control the speed. This section, very difficult snow conditions. You can see rippled waves from where it melted previously. There were some kind of almost like sun moguls in there and the snow filled it in a little bit. But Astrid just trying to control her speed now, coming across the flats and wrapping things up. That was a serious line with some big mountain gnar at the top there, a hugely committed line and the freestyle components down the bottom. Yeah, wow, well, Astrid Chelus, you know, she, she kind of skipped all the features at the bottom and I am wondering if she took a, took a knee to the face there. Maybe the chest. Well, she's clicking out of her skis as we look back here at Astrid's run. Making her way through that peppery section and a perfect landing there, riding out super strong. That snow looks nice under the eagle. And this big back flip. And just, yeah, decent back slap, but manages to hold the line, pull it together. Yeah, a little bit compressed on the landing. I, I think maybe if she does uh, get a chance to do that again, she might take a little bit more speed. It looks like there's a bit, a bit better transition out a little bit further as Astrid now waiting for her score to come in. A solid way to kick things off for ski women for the young French rider riding out of La Clusaz. Here we go, score coming in a 72-3-3 for Astrid as she drops herself into that Dina Star hot seat and awaits what the rest of the ski women are gonna do. All right, well, we are gonna move back up to the top. This woman took a win in the very first event of the year, our first, our first comp of the year with the win. Zuzana Vitek catching up on her thoughts here on the Freeride World Tour Finals. For me, this phase is pretty special because the first time I was competing here on the Freight World Tour, I won the event. It was my first ever victory. So for sure, it feels like very, very uh, close to my heart. I'm here to send it big and fight for the, for the best result I can. Well, just a look into the mindset of Zuzana Vitek, Polish rider. She's got a win already this year and, uh, you know, she's well, she's sitting tied with the woman in the hot seat in the overall rankings right now. So if she wants to move up, this is her opportunity. She's got some freestyle in her bag, but I'd say known more for just that big mountain charging style. She's such a strong technical skier. She certainly blew the roof off in Vervier with that win. She's dropping in now from start to hopping off that wind lip, coming in above the Housel Cliff. Yeah, very direct approach here for Zuzana Vitek, and you can see this nose airing Go. off, getting a little bit bobbled in the landing. That snow there, it, it's it's tricky. We saw a similar effect with the rider, uh, the forerunner, sorry, who dropped in first. So Zuzana Vitek getting bucked on the landing of the hoistle. This is going to be cause for concern for all riders who have lined up this cliff, but she certainly took it from the biggest possible nose. A oh, great move there. Quick reflexes for Zuza to collect her pole as it was moving down with that slough river. You can see that gives you a great indication of the warming effect that the sun's already having on the snow, Anna. The snow is looking certainly heavy. So she just gets caught up in the landing and then loses a ski. So that's going to be a no score for Zuza's first run here. Yeah, and she looked like her hips were a bit behind her feet, maybe a bit kicked 
on the landing. She was yeah. already back, tails touching way before her feet under the ski. So that one was kind of almost doomed from inception as she was backseat in the air. It's really hard to correct that once you're in the air. Well, Zeus is just going to be waiting now for the ski runner to come and collect her gear. So not the start she was looking for, but she will have another opportunity to go back up and fix that one. You can see how deep that bomb hole is. There's the, the, that section of the Vilti Loader face, a bit of a snow collection zone, but it's gonna be interesting to see as the sun hits it, if it stays powdery or if it's gonna get more and more dense and heavy and difficult to land. My suspicion is that it is already a little bit dense. It's been catching the light since the sun came up. And uh, I think that's going to make landings quite tricky. Yeah, for sure. And, and Susanna definitely paying testament to that as she is not happy with, with how that played out. And, and that just shows how much these riders care right there. You know, she's sitting right now in a position where she has a shot at the overall podium and with a strong result still at the overall title. I mean, it's all so tight in ski women that a strong result here is going to catapult a rider right into contention for the, for the world title. Yeah, she was in a good position, but she can still tidy, tidy it up on the second run uh, and have a good shoot for a result here in Fieberbrunn. See the ski dude making his way down here. Yes, yeah, some of the unsung heroes of the Freeride World Tour. These people volunteer to be a ski runner, and then they find themselves in these situations in the gnar, having to retrieve a rider's ski uh, or pole or whatever piece of equipment, and they've got to be able to navigate these seriously technical faces. That is steep up there. So the uh, ski runner making their way down. The last thing we want is to have to send a ski runner for the ski runner's equipment. So it's important that they're, uh, they're able to move around and navigate these difficult, uh, these difficult terrain situations. So as they're skiing down, they've got a little uh, radio piece in their ear so that the uh, producer can direct them to the right position to retrieve that ski. Yeah, and you can see Big bounce there from Zuza's original bomb hole to the second mark that she made in the snow as the ski runner now looking a little hung up. They're going to have to point it through here. Well played. Oh, no. Yeah, there's the ski yeah, there. Still a bit below them. So riders up top who were considering that are going to be uh, going to be spinning in their brains right now. You know, you have an opportunity to select your line from across the ridge with binoculars, you never really have the truest sense of what the snow conditions are until you put, you put skis or, or board to snow. Um, of course, the forerunners give a ton of information, but the riders are con continually gathering information by watching each other. And definitely maybe going to be some head scratching now after watching Zuza do that. Yeah, what we really need is a rider to drop in, boost the Housel Cliff and have a clean landing to instill some confidence in the rest of the field. Yeah, a little bit of inspo there as Zuza collecting her gear and she is going to ski off the Vilti Loader face and aim to regroup now for run two as that was certainly not the result she was looking for. Zuzana Vitek making her way down on the rider's left side of the face and you see here even after that crash just the beautiful technical aspect of, of Zuzana's skiing. She's such a good skier and, you know, typically puts that to great use. So now this is actually quite a good opportunity to reset the head, knowing that you're going to have to go up and do it again. Shake it out a little bit, get the turns in before you make it back up to the top. Catching a little bit of air time there. Yeah, doing a, doing a favor to the rider still to come as the more established that lip is, the better that jump is going to work for the rest of the field. This is where the snow starts to get a little bit tricky. And you can see it's not really moving as slough now, it's moving as balls. So it's definitely warm. I mean, it was two degrees when we started the show at 8.15 this morning. And that was really before the sun had had any effect. So the forecast is for, for significant warming through the day. That's certainly going to play out with some changing snow conditions on the face. And she is ripping it down to the finish there, carrying some speed, watching the compression. And touching the knee, I hope that she is feeling not too beaten up after that tumble. Yeah, that was a tough one. Uh, hopefully, Zuzana is all right and able to take a second run.
Yeah, she seems like she's all right. So that's a no score. And a big, big challenger fended off by Astrid Chelous. As we are moving back up to the top, the ski women's field were two riders out of five so far. And the next rider in the gate is a massive threat. It is, of course, Hedvig Vessel, the peak performance rider. She's been on a slow burn this year, just increasing the results, sitting now in second overall. And Hedvig Vessel poised to pounce on any mistake that any other rider makes as she is making her way across the extreme exposure at the top of the Vilsi Loader. Already catching some air there as she drops in from start one and carries some speed across above the housel. Yeah, zooming across here, catching a little feature on the approach. What happened to Zuza will be looming there in Hedvig's mind as she takes a slightly different angle and stomps it. Hedvig Vessel, a clean, the first rider clean off the Hoysel Cliff and a solid performance so far for Hedvig. Giving the people what they need, bringing the stoke levels up, lining up. Running out of gas a little bit there on that uh, feature, but. I think uh, that was on purpose, Anna, as she changed direction. We haven't really, oh, and Hedvig getting caught up by a little bit of a snow snake there as conditions definitely changing rapidly here on the Vilti Loader. You can see the old slide debris uh, as, as Hedvig's making her way through this tricky snow down towards the lower section. So she was able to hold on to that because she is, you know, extremely, extremely um, coordinated. Big Becky, good landing. All right, well, Hedvig Vessel now really, truly into the run, laying out the backflip with a perfect landing. That's where we saw Astrid have a slight bobble. The, uh, the speed here coming down a little bit, but it's because she's aiming to catch another feature as Hedvig Vessel now popping off the side. And just making her way through those bubbles, it looks like pretty funky snow here. Yeah, I mean, the, the speed that Hedvig is riding here tells you exactly how tricky the snow is. And, and I think for those viewers at home looking at this going, why is she going slow like that? We cannot overstate how weird that snow is. And as the sun gets on it, it gets sticky and everything changes. So for sure, Hedvig probably making a wise choice there and not to throw away a great top section with, uh, with some kind of wonky move in the, in the difficult snow. Getting some chairs as she comes in to finish there. So let's check out the action. Taking some serious air off the housel and having a solid landing, four points there. I really like the way she kind of absorbed the takeoff. That's where Zuza got bucked and then this was absolutely textbook. Every single squat and deadlift that Hedvig did in the off season paid off right there. Absolutely, you can see it's a reasonably flat landing, a heavy landing, and she was just perfectly centered over her skis to ride out strong. Yeah, that was a solid, solid run from Hedvig and showing that veteran savvy in the uh, Hoysel Cliff approach as we- different types of snow in one run. <laughs> Oh Many God. different kinds of snow. And Hedvig yeah. dropping an 82-3-3 oh, and putting herself in the <laughs> hot seat. seat eh? So a big score there oh, girl, for Hedvig yeah. Vessel as she is going to so take over the hot seat. Astrid Chelous <laughs> will be kicked out for the moment as we see big hugs from these two riders. This is the future of free ride. And, you know, we've heard so much from Astrid and Manon about how much they've looked up to Hedvig in their, uh, in their young careers as juniors. And Sick. <laughs> on the wow. qualifiers. Love to hear the catch up as Hedvig. Okay, girls, what you got? <laughs> throwing down the challenge as we catch got? up with it's Manon Lowski. It's such a big phase. A lot of uh, crazy good riders have been there. We have seen crazy runs. So it feels really good to be here to, to ski on that phase. It's going to be super sick. All right, there she is, Manon Loski, rookie on tour, and she is sitting in that golden bib in first place overall. Sorry, not the golden bib. This year it's the fire bib. You can see the flames just uh, catching the bottom there as she has been on fire. Manon Loski, her run in Georgia 
had the potential before she went down of being the highest scoring women's run in the history of the free ride world tour this woman is fireworks absolutely electric every time she pushes out of the start gate another peak performance rider on that stacked free ride team that the peak crew has put together and the young french rider has just delivered time after time after time and she is ready to kick things off it is manon loski in the start gate one, so pushing out of start one, heading over to the looker's right side, where we saw Hedvig enter the face. Yeah, and the snow started to get a little bit chewed up on that, but Manon handling it like a boss as she moves across with pace. Making some turns here where the snow has definitely caught some sunshine, but looking solid. And finding her first features. Yeah, Manon getting a little bit further over than we've seen some of the other riders going. It's so steep in there. You can see the slough just motoring down as she gets back up onto the spine and cutting across. There's no tracks here. Right off the nose for Manon Loski. Stomped. Amazing landing there in a super solid air. She's carrying some speed over into the looker's right section to find some more features. Yeah, approaching this one. Getting popped up. That looks like a tricky takeoff there. And this snow is rapidly evolving with the sun. There are some takeoffs below as Manon getting cross court, taking off, landing clean. So a good start here for the young French rider as she is well into the thick of it on the Vilti Loader. She's got the big mountain components dialed in, and I anticipate we may see some freestyle maneuvers down in the bottom section. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would anticipate that as well, Anna. Her and Astrid always scoping together, and we've seen them tricking many of the same features on the approach here. Manon lining this one up. Are we going to see a big trick? Big backflip for Manon, stomping it again. So a nice, clean flip. That one really starting to, uh, to feature heavily in many of the riders' lines. I love to see it. So many backies from the ski women today. So she's also w making her way through this funky snow on the lookers' left of the bottom section, taking her time there. Yeah, it feels like in this section, there's not a lot to be gained, but there is a lot to be lost. As Manon's slowing down now, almost to a crawl, but as we get the close-up, you can see why. It's rollerballed out, the sun's been on it, it's probably starting to feel really sticky. So Manon now releasing into the fall line a little bit. Very careful riding there, and I think for, for very good reason. Smart riding, I would say. So she is out in the clear, making her way across to the finish line. We've still got blue skies here in Fieberbrunn. Competition is going well. Yeah, it, we've been definitely a little concerned about some incoming clouds. You know, we the riders are not going to not going to enjoy flat light, but a big cheer. Hugs from the homies as Astrid comes out and Hedvig as well. I agree. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As we look <laughs> back here. So this was her kind of centerpiece air that was super committed, perfect landing, handling the really tricky sun-affected snow here, catching a lot more air time and just looking really well centered on the skis. Yeah, judges bar is showing everything high, a fluidity a little bit lower as there were a few hesitations. Another perfect backflip, three backflips, Hedvig set it, and I gotta give credit to her where credit is due. She has kind of set the bar for this in the ski women's field, throwing backflips regularly, seeing three women do it in one comp is such a fantastic evolution of this field. So the peak performance rider there now anxiously waiting to see where that score is gonna put her. Will the fluidity dock hurt her enough to keep her out of the hot seat? Hedvig also gonna be anxious in this moment as we wait for the scores to drop. And of course, these scores, it's only preliminary as it's just the first run. Whatever happens, though, I'm happy. No, it's a good quarter there's someone that deserves it, just go right there. Right, well, getting a little glimpse into into Hedvig's soul there. She's She's got good feelings about the other riders in the category, 82 flat. So just a fraction of a point behind Hedvig. So Manon sliding into second. That's going to bump Astrid down to third. And Hedvig fending off a massive, massive threat 
for that hot seat from Manon Loski. Now, is she going to be able to go back and do that better? There's definitely some aspects of that run that could be a little bit faster, maybe a little bit cleaner. But all in all, very well executed first run from Manon Loski. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how that plays out, whether she chooses to go over onto the looker's left section, which might have some colder snow up top, or whether she's going to train that run. The strategy mystery as we go back up to the top, our last rider in the ski women's field. It is Verbier's Sibylle Blanjean. She is fresh off a win in Georgia, really rising to the pressure. She was below the cut before Georgia and way below. She needed to win if she was going to move beyond the cut, and she did. A huge moment for Sibylle Blanchon, 24 years old, right now sitting in fifth with a sixth, a seventh, and a first from the last event. So she's going to be riding a wave of confidence here into the Fever Brune Pro as Sibylle Blanchon kicks things off for the last rider in ski women. Dropping in from start two, catching some air off the top wind lip there, making some turns above the Halsell Cliff. Does she want it? Yeah, it looks like she does, taking the corner of it in a really, really good direction and clean landing for Sabil as she now gets on that downhill ski and just tries to get things back under control coming into this wind lip, opting for a high line. And lining up her next features, working her way through the funky snow there. It's getting a bit heavier with every turn. Catching some more air and riding out strong. Yeah, solid here for Sabil. So you can see the old debris joined by some new debris as there is a feature over here. She can get on that right ski enough to catch it. She does, popping over the pepper and now way over on the rider's left. Nobody has ventured over here yet so far. And Sabil now redirecting herself back the other way to take this left side of the gully. Making some turns there. The snow is getting a little bit trickier from the channel down but she mean, seems to be making quick work of it might yep. be a little bit easier on this side actually than the lookers left it the does channel. look like it yeah she was able to carry a bit more speed than we saw Hedvig or Manon on the other side of the gully and a nice feature there at the bottom a little extra credit bonus there so Sabil adding a piece to uh to a similar line than we've seen from other riders so will it be interesting to see what the judges do with that but a solid run from the Swiss rider there and uh wow the ski women Across the board, a lot of different lines, a lot of different options, but solid from top to bottom. It's been a super exciting category to watch. A bunch of backies, some serious big mountain gnar in there. And uh, yeah, exciting times. <laughs> so scared of the hustle, yeah, for sure. Let's take a re-look at that as she executed that very, very well. Yeah, she lined it up really nicely, having the perfect amount of speed, and she actually went pretty deep on it and rode out super strong. Yeah, which I think is the move here. Getting control there right into the takeoff, and then Sabil just needing to tr try to control that speed. And then this last feature, I really like the way she took that. She lined up the angles perfectly to minimize the impact and put herself out of the rollerball zone, which is really smart scoping there for Sabil. Absolutely smashed it. I think that bottom right hand section is a, a good shout for clean riding. Yeah, yeah. Similar like you, I think. Six. In the air, it's long, yeah. You have a lot of time to think if you're going to crash or not. <sighs> All right, well, score dropping for Sabil. It moves into the high 70s, 78, 6 7. So Sabil Blanjean putting herself into podium contention. Just bumping out Astrid Chelous. So Sabil doing her part with that pure big mountain style. And Hedvig Vessel finishes run one, sitting pretty in the hot seat. She's going to be happy with that. We've been talking about the slow burn this year of Hedvig, just increasing and increasing and increasing. She's got eyes on one prize, and event wins aren't it. It is the overall title as we look here. So we've got Hedvig in first position, followed by our current leader Manon Loski and Sibylle Blanjon in third position. Astrid and Susanna will be wanting to step it up for round two uh, to bump themselves up the standings there. Yeah, again, we're running with only five riders because Lily Bradley unable to take the start here due to a knee injury sustained uh, late last week. 
right, while free riding in and around the Innsbruck area. So Lily, if you're watching, we miss you and can't wait to have you back on tour once the knee is healed up. Hedvig Vessel holding it down at the top of the heap here in Ski Women as we have wrapped run one for both snowboard men and ski women. Snow conditions definitely starting to play a bit of a factor here as we are gonna come right back with snowboard women after this break. Welcome back to the Free Ride World Tour by Peak Performance. We are live at the Fieber Brun Pro. I am joined by Anna Smoothie. I'm Derek Foose, and we have seen two categories down and two categories to go. We are back here live with snowboard women. As you can see, that Peak Performance helium mattress down there, the most comfortable spot in Fieber Brun for uh, fans to chill out and take in all the action on the Vilsi Loader face. And I am really excited for this category. Snowboard women were absolute fireworks in Georgia the other week, and I'm so excited to see what they put down on the face today. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a great uh, a great season for the snowboard women. We've got some rookies really stepping up and stepping into the pressure, as well as some of our more experienced riders really upping their performance throughout the different venues and different stops on the Freeride World Tour. You can see there the ski men getting ready for their heli bump. As they, uh, Finn Billis said last night, boys, we're going heli skiing tomorrow. So exciting times as we look right now at our overall ranking. Spanish rider Nuria Castan Baron sitting in first place with two wins. Anna Martinez not far behind, especially with more points up for grabs here. Rookie Aaron Sove and Estelle Rosolio tied for third right now. So things are going to definitely have an opportunity to shake up in the snowboard women's category as they get red, get set to kink, kick things off here on the Vilti Loader face. Our first rider of the day. Well, here's our start list. Anna Martinez, a rookie from Chamonix Mont Blanc, followed by Erin Sauve, riding from Canada. Estelle Rosolio, another Chaminard in third position with our current leader, Nuria Castan Baron, in fourth. Yeah, so our current leader overall going to be dropping last in the category here on run number one. As we take a look at what you thought would happen in the Peak Performance Fun Bet fan favorites. 92% of you loving Anna Martinez, Young Chaminard, Chamonard, and Nuria Castan Baron very close behind with 91% betting that she will land on the podium. Estelle Rosolio, the French sender, known for going absolutely huge. 77% of you voting to see Estelle Rosolio, not voting to see her on the podium, voting that she will end up on the podium. We don't get to vote on uh, the results of these competitions, but that is uh, your opportunity to get in the game and get involved with the Peak Performance Fun Bet. So here we have the pulled back view of the top of the Vilti Loader. That is start number two, looking like Anna Martinez getting set. She's, uh, well, I mean, she has had quite a season. She's got a third a, and two firsts 
already. So she is sitting strong in second place. And I cannot wait to see what the young rookie brings to the Vilti Loader. Dropping in there from start two, looking super strong. She's really comfortable in big mountain zones. So she's lacing some turns together above the Viltzi Loader. She competed here for the Challenger Series last year. So she knows the face and she's making her way from the housel to that little triangle section there and lacing her way through. Yeah, getting in, in between those rocks and then just putting the nose of the board into the fall line. Snow conditions definitely tricky out there as Anna Martinez, though, making short work of it. She's so strong. She has the ability to just keep her feet directly over her board, kind of in all terrain, all conditions, popping off that wind lip. And Anna Martinez toe side now up on top of this feature. Looking to line up her next bit of airtime there. Solid landing and cruising over towards the channel on the lookers left. Yeah, boosting off that one. Anna Martinez bursting onto the free ride world tour scene there, catching the grab. So all of those little features in the bowl definitely play a part in the line scores. You can piece together a line score even in the open, especially if it's going to be small distinctions between runs. As Anna Martinez now catching a little bit of a breath before she heads into this lower section, which we saw some of the skiers struggling with. Yeah, there's a bit of funkier snow down here and uh, some flat landings, but she's lining up. Bit of air time there, catching the grab. So Anna Martinez looking solid so far. The first rider out of the gate in the snowboard women's field coming down over this drop. She's going to catch backside just around the corner as Anna Martinez now into the difficult part of this face. She's just going to need to hold on. Yeah, taking it easy, lacing some turns through these roller balls. I think the judges will be understanding that this is challenging snow conditions and it's not going to affect fluidity as much as it would on a perfect day. Yeah, when uh, Lola Best, the commissioner, went to do the snow assessment this morning, he rode right through that exact section and he, he said exactly, or what he said exactly mirrors the way we're seeing the riders approach that which is uh, it's tricky down there and don't throw away your run in that section because it's hard to get through it. So just be sensible. We saw it from Hedvig and, and Manon and we just saw it again from Anna Martinez, the first rider out of the gate in snowboard women. Clean run top to bottom for Anna Martinez. As we look back here at the top section of Anna's run, look how rocky that is. That's where the ski runner had to go through. It looks like they stripped most of the snow out yeah, that might have been in a little worse condition than she was expecting from the visual inspection this morning. But catching some pretty solid airtime on this feature. Yeah, I like this one. Taking off, off the heel side edge, laying the tail down just ahead of the rest of the board to kind of ease into the transition and then just staying strong over the heel side edge to rattle through that old wet slide debris. So Anna Martinez, the line tracker showing exactly where she traveled as we wait for the French rider, former junior freeride world champion, looking to become a freeride world tour champion. And the score coming in with a 72. So Anna Martina is gonna take her place in the hot seat as she has completed her first run out of two. Lots still to play for here on the freeride world tour as Anna gets comfy in the Dina Star hot seat. There we go, we all have our fingers and toes crossed that the clouds will hold off so we can get that second run down for all categories. Yeah, nice view of the start gate here. You can see the tracks starting to uh, starting to gather. A few, quite a few riders opting for very similar lines. Although the face is really wide and really broad, uh, a lot of them scoping similar things and seeing potentially, you know, something you mentioned, Anna, earlier, the morning could be the better time for this rider's left side, and maybe we see a few more riders attacking that rider's right on the uh, on on the afternoon run. So we haven't seen the score yet for Anna Martinez as we are looking at uh, Canadian rider out of Red Mountain, Roslyn, BC, Aaron Sove. So Aaron is on course now. Dropping in there from start two. This is Aaron's first time on the Fieberburn face. She's looking pretty comfortable as she laces some turns there above the exposure. 
I've loved watching Erin's evolution as a tour rider. In the first comp in Verbier, she looked a little bit out of sorts on the big terrain, but she has picked it up so quickly. And now Erin Sauvé, you can see the slough just pouring off the house of cliff as she's going to be popping heelside and flying off that and stomping. Erin Sauvé with a huge statement there, a massive air for the Canadian rider, and what a great way to kick that run off. Love to see it. Super strong airtime there from Erin Sauvé. She is making her way over to the lookers right of the venue to find some more air or some more turns. Yeah, making now easing on down through this section, as you can see, it's starting to shed a bit of snow as the sun really heats things up. So Erin Sauvé, she's just got to be careful through here. You can see the boards bouncing and flexing and moving around so much as Erin Sauvé coming through this middle section. We kind of called this the, the, the coffee break on the Vilti Loader as it goes a little bit flatter before they come down the lower section where things get tricky again. Yeah, a little bit of downtime before you hop into your next feature. She's lining this one up. Catching the grab there and lacing some turns. Looking yeah, Aaron, super solid. Really solid riding from the Red Mountain. She's, uh, you know, she's, she's had such a solid career on the Challengers. It's been short, but extremely successful last year, taking the wins in all three and easing her way into the World Tour. As we said, Aaron Sauvé sitting on a, a, a third and a second, so there's only one podium spot that she doesn't have a piece of yet. It is that number one spot. So Erin looking like she is gunning for that one today here on the Vilti Loader. Yeah, put together a solid line, and I would give her credit too for adapting well to the visual inspection. This season is the first time she's had to do it, um, and I think she's she's done a great job of it. She said the for anyone out there who's looking to start visual inspection as well. The drone footage is really key to scope it from your point of view as you're riding down. Yeah, and Erin is stoked. Big clap there as she approached the finish line. That was a huge run from Erin Sauvé. Oh, boy. And she was fast through that bottom section where we've seen other riders slowing down, so I think the judges are going to take note of that. Let's take a look back, Anna, the top section of Aaron Sauvé's run, banging. Straight out of the gates, catch, catching some airtime into the section above the Housel Cliff. She does take her time to line it up, but it's a solid air and just a fantastic landing. I think she'll be really happy with that one. Yeah, absolutely worth the time taken. As, uh, as we saw Anna making her way through the gully next to that, and Aaron going right through it, getting the method there, tweaking it out. Love to see the riders expressing themselves with the style factor. So Aaron's run, strong, clean, and solid. We'll see what the judges do with that as uh, Anna had the air on way riders left that Aaron didn't have, but Aaron's air at the top was enormous. So a really solid run there from the Canadian, former director of the snow school at Red Mountain, now out here living the life as a pro rider on the Free Ride World Tour. And we are at a 90.33. Aaron yes. absolutely ecstatic with that All score. Right. Yes. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. She is stoked for it. Sliding into the hot seat, getting comfortable. That 90 points is a super strong score. Well, the judges have been saying, you know, in the snowboard women's category, they are going to throw big scores at big moves. And Erin clearly listened to that. Wow, and I always wanted to sit in the hot seat. <laughs> and followed yeah. direction as she takes her place in the hot seat with a gargantuan 90.33. So the rest of the riders have been served notice. That's what it's going to take here on the Vilti Loader. We go back up to another rider who is certainly capable of throwing down huge airs. This is Estelle Rosolio. She is sitting in a tie for third overall with Aaron Sauvé. So she is going to be looking to break that tie by jumping ahead of Aaron. Is she going to be able to better that huge run that we just saw from Aaron Sauvé? If anyone can do it, it's Estelle Rosolio as she gets ready to kick her run off. Perched there in start two, waiting for the call to drop in. Okay, came on, jump. Well, these start gate moments, absolutely anxious. This is probably the worst part, the, the five to 10 minutes before your run, and then the 15 to however long 
that you stand in that gate. As soon as the riders hit the snow and kick things off, the nerves fade and it's just riding. All right, here we go now. Estelle Rizzolio getting things firing for her run here at the Feverbrun Pro. She had such a crowd-pleasing run uh, last year, took a tumble, and then just absolutely sent it. She is making her way into this couloir here, managing that slough, trying not to get caught up, looking like a true shaman. Oh, and navigating through that slough path, riding out strong. Yeah, just as you said it, it looked like the slough caught up with her as she was standing on the heel side. You do need to take a little bit of speed through there if you want the slough not to uh, not to push you around. So, oh, and Estelle going down in that weird snow, just a bit of a belly slide, but she is back up and on point now, making her way across this section. There's not many easy, oh man, this looks like the snow in there has really deteriorated as Estelle Rosolio having a tricky time accessing that air. Yeah, a couple control issues there. As you mentioned, Derek, the sun's been on that snow since first thing this morning, and it's it's getting a little funky. So maybe that's why we've seen a lot of play on this side of the space uh, for the first run, and we might see move, riders move across to the left as the sun continues to blaze. Blazing sunshine, and a blazing run now for Estelle Rosolio, popping off that feature. Nice, clean landing for Estelle as she's now into... The bottom third of the Vilti Loader, and this is where things get really difficult for the riders. The snow conditions evolving through the day, but this section was hard already to begin with. You can see how shallow the tracks are. So Estelle going to make a turn above this cliff. We'll see if she opts to point it off there. I would, oh no, right into the heart of it for Estelle Rosolio. She's going to have to get off that edge and go, and she does. And smashing through that funky snow beneath it like it's no problem. Maybe speed is what you need for this section, Derek. Yeah, maybe, because she just came blasting out of there. A big heel side arc, and now riding the flat board across the bottom section, crossing the creek, and into what I don't want to speak too soon until she at least is through the finish arch, into the safe zone and complete. So some... Some positives and some maybe slightly less on that one, Estelle, with some control issues up top, but a really strong bottom section. Yeah, she'll be happy she's got round two to shake things up. and uh... She's got a bit of snow caked up there. As we take a look back here at the top section of Estelle's run, getting into this couloir, Anna, and just as you said... Battling the slough a little bit here. It's, it's running super fast because it's heavy snow. And then catching some nice air time. But as we mentioned, there was a few control issues. But she still commits to the send and rides out strong through the trickiest snow in the yeah. whole face. Yeah, you can see the board just flapping and bobbling everywhere. But Estelle, again, another rider who has put her time in in the gym. Super strong. As, as Estelle looking a little rattled there. As she is going to have an opportunity to clean that up. There's a ton of snow tucked up under her helmet. Score coming in for Estelle, a 51 flat. So that's going to need to be tidied up if she wants to bother Aaron Sove with the 93-3. As we check in with our current rankings leader on the free ride world tour, Spanish superstar Nuria Castan Baron. This season, it's for me, one of the best seasons so far I've ever had in my whole career. So uh, just keeping the same mindset uh, that I had since the beginning. All right, well, Nuria, one of the riders who has had a bit of an up and down roller coaster ride on the tour, off the tour, requalifying. This year, coming in with a new mindset, super strong. 26 years old and sitting in that fire bib in first place with two wins. So it is possible if Nuria wins and Anna is third or less, Nuria can be crowned champion here in Fieberbrunn. But of course, she has a 90.33 to beat, which is a big ask for any rider in any category. So Nuria Castanberon now looking to do her part to knock Aaron Sove out of that hot seat. And it looks like she's lining up the same cool wire that we saw Estelle move through. Maybe some of the snow in here has already shifted and she's not going to have such a slough battle. She's looking pretty tidy so far. She works her way down. 
Yeah, nice slash turn above the rocks. And now beating her slough only just out of the couloir. So a clean exit for our current rankings leader on the free ride world tour as Nuria now making her way toe side. We've said the Goofies have the Goofy footers a little bit of an advantage on this uh, on this crossover section. She's looking really tidy on this section. Some some riders have been battling the snow there, but she's looking good, catching some air time there and heading back down towards the bottom section. Yeah, so opting not to go up onto that flank that caused Estelle so much grief and instead riding out in the open, uh, the open field and collecting features there. That open section, you know, she's added three features that other riders completely skip. So if Nuria is able to uh, put a solid bottom section together, she can find herself in the mix as she gets heel side now, approaching this kicker that's seen so much action already. Popping 180 there, Nuria adding a little bit of air and style. Yeah, still riding through switch and reverting to Goofy. She makes her way through this funky snow. Has she got more action for us down below? Yeah, so far Estelle Rosolio, the only one to bite off a chunk of that lower cliff section and you can see her track. She handled that like an absolute veteran. Nuria catching another feature there. So adding again to the line score through this tricky lower section and Nuria now just about through the roller balls, carving on the toe side, just trying to stay balanced. There she goes, hands tucked in behind. Working on the speed. aerodynamics as she guns it for the finish line there. So a tidy run from Nuria, I would say. Yeah, that was a clean run all together. Hard to see that um, knocking Aaron Sove out of the hot seat with that enormous air that Aaron had up top. But I think Nuria just doing what she had to do in order to be solid and a playful finish for the young Spaniard. That looks like fun. All right, Anna, as we go back to the top to relook at Nuria Castel Baron. So in this steep couloir, she's out on the edges there, beating her slough through the bottom, not getting upset by it whatsoever. And then putting some lots of smaller features through the middle of her um, run there, adding them up. Yeah, and then I like that, almost, almost turned it into a butter 180 kind of laying the tail press down for the last half of the rotation, sliding switch for quite a few turns, which the judges definitely take note of. That is hard, especially in some of the most difficult snow on the face right now, riding switch in there. We saw it, Nuria, handle it like... All right, well, some shout outs for the folks at home from Nuria. Aaron Sauvé looking very comfortable in the Dinastar hot seat. And as she said, and I really like that, I always wanted to sit here. And now this is her chance. She's got, as we said, a third, a second on the tour so far. First, the only one that's eluded her. So good. Score dropping for Nuria, yeah. a 71-3-3. Oh, well so into third place for Nuria Castan Baron right. and Aaron Sauvé after run one, yeah. sitting queenly in the hot seat. As we get a big hug from these two ladies in the snowboard women's category. Strong riding across the board from the ladies as they catch up here. Oh, I wheelied out of it, but it was fine. I was not getting thrown away yet. All right, well, here we see how things shook out after run number one. Aaron Sauvé, Anna Martinez in second, and Nuria Castel Baron right now in third, with Estelle Rosolio going down on her run. So she's going to be looking to regroup for run number two. All right, well, here we have another look at Aaron Sauvé's run. So strong over her board, even that move above the Hoysel Cliff. And then this absolute highlight banger. Aaron Sauvé, the biggest air so far of the category, getting the method down here as we wrap up Snowboard Women. Welcome back 
to the Free Ride World Tour by Peak Performance, the Fieber Brun Pro kicking things off in fine style here as we just wrapped up snowboard women and we are set to kick off with ski men this field the heaviest of heavy hitters just getting to the fwt finals a feat in and of itself the peak performance helium mattress providing a very comfortable viewing position for some of our fans here as we look right now the overall rankings sit as such max hitzig with two wins counting on 20,000 points but marcus gogan very, very close behind with only, uh, you know, only less than 2,000, just over 2,000 points behind. Christopher Turdell still in touch as well. And then the rookie Tenla Katsuno and Ben Richards holding it down for that rookie class. As we move through, we've got another tie as we have in a few fields with Bender and Finn Billis. And then there's the cut line, Maxime Chablot uncharacteristic a little bit as we saw him crash and kicking horse and that was an unfortunate result. And then the list of riders below that cut line, a who's who of free ride athletes. It's gonna be difficult to get it done. Maxime Chablot, your 2022 world champ, gonna be kicking things off in the ski men's field. He had a very strange draw. He drew first in run one and last in run two. So he's gonna be bracketing the field on both sides, Oscar Mandin, Ben Richards, and then all the way through, Marcus Gogan, of course, in position right now to challenge Max Hitzig, who will be the last rider of the day for that overall, and then Carl Regner Eriksson, unfortunately, will not be taking the start. He's got a knee injury that he's nursing from his crash in the Georgia Pro. We're hoping to see Carl back for the Verbier Extreme. Here we go, 84% of you voting that uh, Max Hitzig is going to come out on the podium in the Peak Performance Fun Bat fan favorites. Marcus Gogan with 61% of the fan votes. And Maxime Chablot, who has performed very well in the past on this face, getting 30% of the Peak Performance Fun Bat fan favorite vote to land himself on the podium. And there he is, your 2022 world champ, your 2019 junior world champ. He is a kite surfing junior world champion as well. As we see the crowd sitting pretty there on the peak performance helium bed. That looks like the comfiest seat in the house. As we were able to catch up with Maxime Chablot. Well, this year making the cut was very stressful for me. Barely made it through. Uh, it's been a really challenging year. So just making the cut is amazing because you can, you know that you're qualified for next year. All the pressure of this cut is, is away. There's more points up for grabs. So basically everything is still open and uh, you can just go full send and show your best scheme. Well, a great look into the mind there of Maxime Chablot and what he said is so accurate. Just making the cut these days is a huge feat in and of itself as the field is so stacked. We whittled it down from 22 riders to 11. We're dropping 10 today in absence of Carl Regner Eriksson, who we miss dearly, but looking forward to hopefully seeing him back in the mix for Verbier if the healing goes well. But Maxime Chablot, I mean, this guy, he was the bubble boy on the cut, uncharacteristic for Maxime to be that low in the rankings. We've been used to seeing Chablot right up at the top, including taking the title in 2022 as he is gonna be our first man out of the gate for ski men, and it's so exciting right now. Yeah, he's had some really strong results here before, and I'm excited to see what he's gonna to put together on the Wilty Loader today. Yeah, Maxime has has kind of been a staple of that rider's left, or sorry, rider's right side. He's got a line that he skis pretty regularly that has paid off year after year after year. So we'll see which direction Chablot chooses, and it is out to the rider's right. You got it, Derek. This morning we saw the forerunners take on the big uh, transfer hit that was made famous by Marcus Ader and George Rodney, and it's on. So catching some big airtime off the ridge there already, carrying some serious speed. Yeah, Chablot boosting. This is a little tricky. This thing doesn't have a lot of snow on top. Riders need to go super light. Maxime with the double backflip. Perfect. Green. Absolutely perfect from Maxime Chablot. What a way to start ski men. They're a double backflip on the upper section of the face. And now just enjoying this smooth powder before he ticks off his next feature. What a start for Maxime. Unbelievable scenes. I'm sure he's got more for us down the bottom here. 
He's lining up this feature. Going, going for seven. the cork seven. No, that snow so hard. You can see he barely made a dent in it. Not a bomb hole, but just a track. Maxime Chablot going down on that court seven. It was textbook Chablot up to that point. Putting it all on the line there today. But he's got another run to clean it up and he's not done yet testing out these takeoffs and landings. Another lofty backflip for Maxime Chablot as he comes in above this cliff, putting it into the fall line, skip, skip, and he is gonna be out. This section of the, uh, of the venue has been testing riders all day. Chablot opting for the fall line approach, which I actually think is really wise. If you don't let your skis get across the hill, there's way less pressure built up. Definitely just running those bubbles straight down. So, I mean, he'll be disappointed that he came unstuck on the cork sieve, but he's got an opportunity to clean it up in the next run. Yeah, and we did hear from the forerunners that that section of the, uh, of the venue was extremely firm. So the look of what could have been there for Maxime Chablot, as we look at the top, the approach to this, he's got to skip lightly over those rocks and then heaving the double backflip to a perfect landing. That could not have gone better. It was a thing of beauty. And you can see he gets a little caught up coming in to set this cork seven. Now let's watch the reception on the ground. It was just absolutely rock hard there. You could see his knees flex up. His legs did the best they could to take that impact. And a solid landing on the backy there, making quick work of this bottom section. Great uh, ingredients to this run from Maxime Chablot. We just need to work on the seasoning a little bit. Yeah, all the pieces are definitely in place. I'll be very curious to Let's see go. if he goes back to that well for run number two, if he feels that run. that is a stickable run. 60.33 there for Maxime Chablot. So definitely a high scoring run in the cooker if he's able to chef it up on run two. So hopping into the hot seat for now, but we've got a lot of heavy, heavy hitting riders to go. Yeah, the who's who of free ride just stacked up at the top of the Vilti loader in men's ski. The next man, you know, he joked that I, I, I called him out for either crashing or podiuming, and he's hoping for a podium here. He's got a 16th, a second, and a 15th, and that second place earning him a spot into finals. Oscar Mandin is on course now, and he is heading out to the rider's left side, steep, exposed, right out of the start gate. He got a podium here at last year, so I'm sure that gives him a lot of confidence coming into the punchy start from start one. A little shifty at the top there, lacing some turns in above the Housel Cliff. Yeah, high speed approach there, taking a good angle and clearing the bomb holes. Oscar Mandin now at full throttle, coming across onto this far left flank. This is where things get a little tricky as we just lost our view. If you get up super high on that wind lip, you do lose the speed to hit it as a jump, but I don't think that's gonna bother Oscar as he's using that as an approach to this lower cliff section. Lining up something spicy here for us. Big backy, bit of a whack flip. Oh, and again, that landing is so hard. The two opposite sides of the venue, both providing very, very firm landings. And that section had a big wet slide pile of debris that, uh, that, that was stamped out earlier in the week. And Oscar just not able to hold that landing as he tosses a nice straight air on that lower section. This is gonna be another back to the drawing board line for Oscar Mandin. So had two Ski men down and a couple crashes down. It's uh, all, all to play for. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see who is able to find the features that have a soft enough reception that they're able to hold it. Keep in mind that these are some of the strongest athletes in the skiing world. So if they're not able to hold those landings, that means it cannot be held. It's so firm over there. And, you know, the, the angle on that one, Oscar, especially with that backflip, went way out into the landing. And it was definitely a big impact. Crashé le sève, exactly. <laughs> As we look back here on Oscar Mandan's run, really strong up at the top. Looking super solid, aggressive start to his run. 
And this is where things come a little bit undone. He has the backflip. He brings it around, as you said, a little tweak. Maybe a tiny bit of over-rotation, but it just looked like the impact was too much to hold there for Oscar. Yeah, so he makes his way down the rest of his run, testing out those takeoffs and landings, getting ready for round two. Yes, so Oscar Mandin is wrapped up his run. We're going to see the judges' scores coming in, but with a significant control issue. I mean, we'll see how they judge those two crashes against each other, but uh, at this point, no real worries. So 46, 6, 7, thumbs down from Oscar, but he does get another opportunity to tidy that up well, in run number two for the Avoriaz rider. Back to the drawing board, back to the lab, and he'll have to decide if he's going to want to take another swing at that, if he thinks that's stickable. Similar to Maxime, you know, the crash wasn't, uh, wasn't an issue of execution. It was just too hard. Back up to the top, Kiwi rider Ben Richards. An absolute pleasure having this man on the tour, battling it out on the qualifiers for quite a while, and then finding his way into the mix on the free ride world tour this year, sitting right now in fifth overall. Silky smooth riding is what we come to expect from the Kiwi. Yeah, Ben's riding is really quiet. He makes everything look so effortless. And he's had a strong debut on the World Tour, spinning a three, looking so smooth and going huge off the housel. But a bit of a backslap there for Ben Richards as that approach was textbook. Textbook Ben Richards. And unfortunately, setting it down. A beautiful 360 above the exposure and pinned. Woo, Ben Richards is bringing the heat here today. Going huge. Wow, he's linked together so many incredible features at serious pace. It's one of the quickest runs we've seen. Well, I love this approach from Ben Richards. And, you know, we saw him slightly more conservative in the early events, and then he picked it up in Georgia, going for one of the biggest moves of the day. And he is above a hefty chunk of rock here. Ben Richards over the whole thing, not oh. able to hold it. Oh, Going down. There's not many people that managed to take a bite out of the bottom of the channel and live to tell the tale, I must say. The, right where the sun shade line is, the transition from steep to flat is so aggressive. It goes from down to almost completely flat in about a meter, and Ben Richards already super backseat, maybe even laying on his back at that point. So another rider down without a clean run in ski men. We are three in and three down, but Ben Richards making a big statement with the rest of that run. Oh, some veteran <laughs> advice there from Shablo. And did you hear, Ben? You could have told me yesterday. <laughs> He's so silky smooth through this whole run, taking, putting features together with serious pace. For sure, not a clean landing, but incredible features. I love this part. Spinning into it, locking in fall line, and not even the slightest hint of a check turn. And then right onto that right foot. And here's where it all came undone for Ben. He lands, he gets pushed into the back seat, and then you can see him get tossed by that transition. And you heard it from Chablo in the finish. Never go into the gully. That transition's so aggressive. It's the first rule of FIBA Bruin. <laughs> the first rule of FIBA Bruin. <laughs> well, you could have told me yesterday, Maxime. As we wait for the scores to come in, for Ben Richards, going to be another significant control issue. Maybe not a huge loss in fluidity as he was able to backspin his way out of that. So maybe, yeah, he pushes Maxime out of the hot seat with a 64. The battle of the crashers right now in the ski men as so far these guys having a tough time with the Vilti loader. I always thought it was a bit comfortable here. <laughs> sick. First time in the hot seat and I crashed. Here for you. <laughs> Yeah, keeping the energy levels high as, uh, you know, if you're just joining us at the Fever Broom Pro, we are running a two-run format here. So these riders are going to have a chance to go up and do it again, clean things up. Here we go. We got a number, another member of the Crash Crash Podium Club along with Oscar Mandin. This is Martin Bender, 19 years old. Actually, just turned 20 the other day. Enjoyed a cake in the face for his troubles. And Martin Bender on course now on the Vilti Loader. Dropping in from start one, carrying some speed across above these cliffs. 
Sure, we're gonna see some fireworks, a little 360 there. Yeah, Bender now approaching the Heisel Cliff. There's a few different ways that this can be taken. He's going a bit more out to the rider's right for this cross-court option and spinning a 360 in. Clean landing for Martin Bender. So a great start to this run. Bender already with two 360s in, and he's not even halfway down. Going for the Super G arc, showing the judges that technique. Super strong skiing there. I'm sure the gorillas at home will be going bananas. Hopping up onto a shelf here over on the lookers right section and taking a big chunk off. Yeah, that one, we have uh, we haven't seen any action, but I think that's wise because the snow looks far better in that central section of the Vilti Loader face than it has anywhere else for the other riders going out on the borders. Bender now approaching this jump, lofty backflip, having to really swing it around at the end, but getting it under. Looking solid. I'm sure he's got more to give us here, getting a little bit caught up, but catching Catching a little bit of air time there. Yeah, a, a forced arc turn there as Bender opting to go around this one and just save himself the trouble of this kind of really tricky section airing over the bottom and putting it into the fall line. So barring any horrors in this lower section, we have our first clean run from Ski Man. Both poles in one hand and flapping the wings there. As you said, Legory back at home in Verbier, gonna be stoked with that as he pounds his chest like the gorilla he is. Oh, so sick. Sick skiing, man. Smart. So we're gonna no. check out the replay here, floating a 360 in above the exposure of the Housel Cliff. Yeah, and then this angled approach allows him to set that left three and landed so nice. The angles match up really well there for Bender. And then I like this section. This is very smart, and you heard Ben Richards kind of echo that. Smart skiing. And I really like also that, oh, this is a beautiful laid out backy. Pulls his tips around just in time. But what I really liked is that he lands and has to ski across a bunch of bomb holes and he just laces super G turns. You see the technicity of his skiing. Technicity indeed, and the first clean run that we have seen all day long. Bender all smiles there in the finish. First clean run executed top to bottom, and we are gonna see the score come in, and I think it's gonna be reasonably high, a 78-3-3. So the judges leaving a bit of room for what they know could be to come. As Martin Bender taking over the Dina Star hot seat with a very, very strong run here on the Vilti Loader for the young Swiss rider coming out of Verbier. A lot of talent stacked up in that Verbier free ride club as they are pretty, well, maybe not so talented at putting skis against backdrops. We are back up to the top. Another rookie. We've got the three rookies on tour that are left in a row. And this is the third member of the rookie class, Niseko's Tenla Katsuno. He has been on fire this year, and it's so exciting to see this man sitting in fourth overall, the highest placed rookie so far on the Freeride World Tour. And a 360 right off the top for Tenla. Such a committed move, carrying some serious speed and pulling another 360, turning back towards the housel. Tenla getting things started with a bang. Off the point with a backflip and another perfect landing for the Niseko rider, Tenla Katsuno, making a big statement here as he gets over into the far left. We've seen some tricky, tricky stuff. Another 360. How many rotations can we get in one run? Let's see what he's got for us in this bottom section. Solid straight air, looking strong on the skis. His time in New Zealand has really set him up to handle the challenging conditions here on the lower section. Yeah, and this is smart riding from Tenla Katsuno as he's avoided some of those bigger impacts in the section where the snow is not good. Tenla now lining up this jump. Another big laid out backflip landed perfectly on the feet. This is a huge run from Tenla. Making his way down to see what other features he can put together. He is going to take a bite out of this one, where we saw Estelle go. Yeah, Perfect the, landing. The transition on that one is short, which is uh, accounts for that little speed check at the end. If you boost off that one, you put yourself way out into the flats. So really veteran 
veteran uh, execution there from Tenla Katsuno as he did a smart line selection. In the places he needed to go fast, he went fast. In the places he needed to go slow, he went slow. And a perfect run top to bottom for the Japanese rookie. Great start. Three threes, two big backies. Yes. What's not to, yes. not to like? He is happy. He's heard him just little fist bump. Yes. He's one of the more understated cool. riders on tour until he pushes out of the start gate. And what a way to start. Yeah, this is a huge place to pull a move like that, I would say. Yeah, really backing himself. And then backflipping the house of cliff with a perfect landing. Didn't even look like he had to flex his legs, lining it up so well. This jump, pretty much mandatory backflip at this point. Absolutely, a great run from Tenla. Finding the transition there and just straight lining out through those roller balls. Well, I think we're going to be seeing the judges loving that one. When we look at the replay, there wasn't even a hint of loss of control there from Tenla as he waits now for the scores to drop. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> stuff. Well, the helicopter ski going a little sideways there as the r score coming in, and he's into the 90s. 90.33 for Tenla Katsuno. A massive score there for the Japanese rookie. This man leading the rookie class so far and not looking like he's letting his foot off the gas whatsoever. Big smiles from the Japanese rider. Right, well, as Tenla settles himself into the Dinastar hot seat, we did have a chance to catch yes. up with Marcus Gogan, the Whistler rider, for his thoughts on the Vilti Loader. Before the cut, there was the point system was a bit different, and there was 10,000 points for the win. Now, after the cut for the finals events, there's uh, 12,000 points on the line for the win. So. There's a bit more pressure and a bit more opportunity to get uh, more points for the overall. So my mindset has not changed at all entering the finals. I'm just going to keep the flow going. Full throttle, Marcus. Go, 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 again, as your brother coined. And it has been proven time and again this year, riding out of the Whistler Free Ride Club. This is his second season on tour. And he's coming fresh off his maiden victory on the Free Ride World Tour at the Georgia Pro. We'll see how he can back that up. Marcus Gogan now on the Vilti Loader. Dropping in from start one, looking pretty speedy across that top section, pulling a big floaty three and hitting it above the Kuwa. Yeah, Marcus going a little bit further over than we've seen anybody else. And spinning into the Heusel, pinned off. Unbelievable move from Marcus Gogan as he is now gathering speed with his foot on the gas, railing turns across this lower section of the Vilti Loader. Up, on, and over. Marcus Gogan making short work of that upper section. Incredible precision here from the young Canadian. Unbelievable line choice there, super creative. And he's lining up a big floaty backy there. He's gone the biggest of the day, but. Wow, what a save there. Marcus losing a foot out from under him, but pulling it back as Marcus Gogan now into this lower section, coming across, landing fall line there, just skipping over the rocks and now putting it down again, pinned to the fall line. Marcus Gogan executing this high speed run, that 360 above the Hoysel Cliff was unbelievable. Lacing that all together, I think, was the most impressive thing <laughs> to me. There were huge moves pulled all together at speed. That was pretty sketchy, holy shit. 360 into the floor. Yeah. Oh. Tenla oh. almost leaving Marcus hanging there. <laughs> As he catches his breath, Anna, run us through this replay. What a way to start this runoff. Well, here he pulls a 360 and just immediately is in the air again, rides out so fast, and then takes that pace right over to the looker's left where he manages to skip, hop, and transfer off that bluff section. The precision of the feet required here. This is where things went a little hairy. Marcus going much further than everyone else, punching through the snowpack, but muscling it out. 
Tenla loving it there as he watched Marcus lay down that run. So there is a little bit of a bobble in that, not quite the perfection we saw from the Japanese rider. We'll see what the judges do with that. But the top section of that, just stellar for Marcus Gogan as we wait for the scores to drop. Just, just held it together. <sighs> well, he knows as well as everyone else does. So it is a 94 wow. 6 7 for Marcus Good. Gogan. That okay. bobble proving no bother for the judges as maybe the save even giving him a, a boost in control. So the judges loving the combo of free ride and freestyle there from Marcus Gogan as he moves himself into that hot seat. Well, we got a bit of a shuffle going on here, but there are no breaks on the Free Ride World Tour. We got to get through three, uh, sorry, two runs today. We are going back up to the reigning champion, Peak Performance, and Scott Ryder, Valley Rayner, the Austrian now, kicking out of the gate, sitting in sixth place overall. So he's got to make some moves if he wants to bump himself up into the top of the rankings. And we've got more points on offer here for the podium positions in the FWT finals. So Valle will be really going for it. Airing in this top section. Yeah, loving that approach, this 360 into the exposure. Valley Rainer now lining himself up above the Hosel Cliff. And a 360, what is this ski men's field? Everybody is tricking the high, so I've hardly seen any tricks off that in the past. And he's lining up this wind lip here. Floats a three, puts himself in position, and shoots through that next feature. Yeah, really similar approach to what we saw from Ben Richards, and going for the same direction, kind of opting not to pop off that one, pulling the feet up from under him now, making his way through these balls, Valley Rainer. Clean through the top section. What's he got for us in the bottom? You can see this glide crack and then the snow changes instantly. Yeah, there are some decent rollers here to catch some air time as he has clearly <laughs> demonstrated. Riding out through those roller balls and in towards the finish. Well, great run from Valley Rainer. So had some question marks at the start of the ski men's field as we saw the first three guys go down pretty hard. But I think what we're seeing now from the last three, since Tenla, Marcus, and Valle, line choice is everything today. And avoiding those places where the snow is rock hard, there are opportunities for, well, free ride world tour execution and, uh, and perfection in, in the venue today. Valle Rayner proving it there. A huge run from the champ. So checking out this action at the top committed air above a lot of exposure below. Floating that 360 around, looking super solid on the skis, lacing the turns through this really chopped up snow. And then here we see the approach to this move, lining up the 360, Valley coming out of it exactly the right rotation and just carrying a boatload of speed into this. And I love this approach, spin in, nuke out. Valley Rainer so precise there, and oh, that was perfect. Absolutely hissing out of that feature. See his line score there, making the most of the right side of the venue. Well, Valley just trying to catch his breath. The judges getting to work now. The score coming in, and it is high, 85-3-3. So only Tenla and Marcus holding down the spot above Valley Rainer. Incredible action coming to us here live at the Fieber Brune Pro. As we take a look, Marcus Gogan, Tenla Katsuna, Valley Rayner, that is your top three with only three men to go, but they are three of the biggest dogs in the pound as we go back up to the top to a two-time world champion, oh, man, the smoothest man on skis, Christopher Turdell, the peak performance rider, 34 years old, sitting in oh, man, third place overall hunting with the Young Bucks for an overall title. And Christopher going huge right out of the start gate and kicking things off with a bang. He has got a lot of experience and success on this face, so I'm excited to see him heading into this area. We've only seen Manon Lovsky oh, so far. Oh, and uh, into the eagle for Turdell. It's the huge. sweet staple, and he laces it as he is known to do. Christopher Turdell, the first one to take on that huge chunk of the Vilti loader and doing it so perfectly, tossing a 360 now in this lower section. Turdell 
Wow, what a great start. Always such a strong skier in all conditions and a big backflip floating it around. A little bit of a bubble in the landing, but he's holding it together and powering on. And I think he snapped his left pole. It looks like only half of it is there. So somewhere along the way, Christopher Turdell's left pole opting out of this run. Maybe it was too scared of the Eagle to join along for the ride. But Turdell not letting that affect him with the big backflip and the 360 executed with a single pole. Christopher <laughs> Turdell. Just a, a little lesson in when four-point landings go bad. Yeah, I'd say probably good that he had the pole there to absorb some of that impact. So Turdell just going back to the well that has delivered podium runs for Team Sweden time after time. We wondered if, ever, if anyone wanted a piece of that. What a run! Oh, yes. So sick. A huge run. That's scary. That looks scary. Both of my buddies, Carl and Rainer. Eagle buddies. <laughs> Eagle buddies, Carl, Regner, Erickson, and Reina Barkered. That one was for you as we look back on this run from Christopher Turdell. So airing out of the start gate there, getting in the groove for a huge run. Let's just check out the approach to the Eagle. Serious pace and commitment and just goes enormous off it. Perfect landing and laces, laces some turns out of there. Yeah, as only Turdell does. And then the lofty backflip, almost going over the front there, but Christopher Turdell holding on, keeping it together. All the bars were pinned to the roof for Christopher Turdell. Incredible run from the two-time champion peak performance rider. He is all smiles now in the finish. He said he was scared. Every single time a rider takes on the eagle, our hearts just go into our throats as the score climbing up. A 93 flat, putting Turdell into second place. So Marcus Gogan, incredible that that was able, his run able to fend off that level of, uh, of riding from the two-time champ as they kind of go and tell some stories. And then I went in and I got super sketchy in there and then it was super sketchy back. So that was, yeah, like one leg up, I don't know how. I don't know. <laughs> Whoa, you broke your pole. Yeah, like off the eagle and I was like, well, off the eagle. You still toss the back, you know? Wow. Well, here we go. That has shaken up the podium standings right now. Marcus Gogan sitting on top. Turdell in second. Those two boys still well in the hunt for the overall title. Tenla now sitting in third as we are back up to the top to one of the happiest men on the free ride world tour. He is an Olympian in slope style and right now he is sitting pretty in sixth position. We missed Finn Billis in Georgia, but he had filming obligations to ski powder, which he had to take care of, dropping the hand drag three right out of the start. So huge start there from Finn Billis. Already bringing the good vibes into the Housel Cliff, spinning off that one, riding out super strong. Yeah, so what a way to start. I think he spun the hand drag left and the Housel right. So Finn just showing his versatility coming in here with the flat spin and pinned, getting a couple control turns now and holding the fall line. Finn Billis going full pedal to the metal here on the lower section of the Vilti Loader, enjoying this little break before the action picks back up on the bottom half. Coming into this with this seven, perfect. Oh, Finn Billis. There are very few riders that can do that on this face and backing it up with a three sticksy, staying fall line here. He's gonna check a little bit of speed to make sure he catches the transition on this one, which he does perfectly. That looks like classic Kiwi conditions there. Yeah, certainly growing up in New Zealand makes you well versed in dealing with all kinds of snow conditions and Finn just made that whole run look so silky smooth and easy. That was magic from Finn Billis and we are just seeing the level popping higher and higher and higher here as we make our way through the day. Finn popping oh, in switch. What a run, bro. Thank you, brother. So clean. Oh, appreciate it. Gangster, bro. So sick. Well, Marcus loved Woo! it. We loved it. I feel the judges are going to love it, too, as we take a look at the replay here from Finn Billis. So that hand drag three coming in 
Oh, we're skipping straight to this one where does the Japan grab flat spin and Hiss is out of this feature. Yeah, just controlling the speed enough. Catching the blunt on the cork seven. Perfect, perfect landing for Finn Billis. That was so nicely done. And then straight away into the 360 and still catching this bottom feature. So Finn taking every single morsel of the Vilzi loader and gobbling it all up with a beautiful run and then just skipping over the bottom, holding the fall line there, the best way to approach it. Feels like New Zealand out there. <laughs> Spicy. Spicy conditions here at the Fieberbrun Pro. The score going up, up, way up into third with another run in the 90s. The ski men just getting very comfortable with those 90 point runs. Finn Billis pushing himself into third. So huge runs here dropping from the ski men as we catch up with our current leader, Max Hitzig. No, the finals are not a, a new start for the season. You just have to continue the competitions. I want to push the sport into harder lines. So it's uh, it's unique to, to ski on that phase. And now we are in the finals and it's, it's go time. Now we are in the finals. As you said, it's not a restart. The, ra the rankings or the, the finishes from before still count. So he has already got two wins on the season and a podium finish in Georgia. So sitting on, as it's best two or three, he's sitting on two wins. So he has the point advantage right now over Turdell and Marcus Gogan. He opened up a brand new line on this section last year. Will he go back to that? It looks good. It looks like it goes, Anna. Yeah, that was a power move. I hope we see some play in that today. He is heading over to that area. Well, we've been calling it the Hitzig. And Max hits it, getting a little wild on the approach. Is he going to have enough speed? He takes it with a 360 and lands perfectly. Oh, Max hits it, taking his magic and just increasing it here on the Viltzi loader. That was an incredible move. So bold from Hitzig. And getting some more airtime under his belt as he moves through this open section. No! Oh, whoa! Catching a bush there. Matt Hitzig narrowly avoiding disaster on the lower portion of the Vilti loader. He's got some rollers to play with down here. Catching some more air time. Oh, Looking and getting a little it. loose there as well. This snow is so tricky. He's such a strong rider. Going for almost the Andrew Pollard, Drew Tabke-esque long cross-court move. I'm glad to see someone keeping the swoop alive, as Pollard loves to call it. That was a sweet move at the end there from Hitzig. I thought he had let his foot off the gas just before that, but he never does. Certainly not. Making his way across the flats there for the finish line. A pretty spectacular run with some really hairy moments there <laughs> where he managed to just hold it together. Yeah, I, I can't... I'm mouth wide open, that top move off the Hitzig transfer to add a 360 to that is just incredible. Oh, three are great, bro. It's awesome. I know. Bro, you're next level. Bro, you're Shit. next level. That three was perfect. It looked All right, let's take a look back here. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the approach to this got a little wild, too. Definitely. Rocking, rocking and rolling. And you can see that's just perfectly set to land and ride out super strong. Yeah, he lost a ski there. He was a touch inside, which we don't see from Hitzig, but still having the wherewithal to hit that, add the 360 and land absolutely perfectly on the transition. Popping in here, and this is where things start to get wild for Hitzig. He shoots off this one, gets on that right foot, and then the bushes almost, oh, we're not gonna get to see it, but almost gobbling up Matt's Hitzig. So, that run ha had a bit of everything. It had it had one, probably the move of the day so far, and then some real heart pounders in the middle. So interesting to see what the judges, I saw on the green bars there during the replay and a control a little bit down, which definitely makes sense to what we saw. That's super exhausting, but it was fun, good snow. Good snow, interesting feedback. Okay, what was the score? 94. 
So there we sit. Marcus Gogan on top, Christopher Turdell in second, and Finney B, Finn Billis in the top three, and then a whole bunch of heavy hitters still rounding things out. It's going to take a high 90s run to knock Marcus Gogan off the podium. But remember, we saw Chablot go down on a blazer with a double backflip. It almost feels like some of those upper moves a little wasted when things go hairy at the bottom. Oscar Mandin as well. So the judges have their work cut out for them because this one had uh, a little bit of everything. A, a true roller coaster ride for Max Hitzig. You can see them there well, furiously writing, discussing the scores, so the so with the ranking being the most important yeah, right? section yeah, above the yeah, above yeah, the scoring. Yeah, I, I, I bet. So I love hearing these guys just telling their stories. Here we go, the score coming in. So Max Hitzig with a 90.33. The uh, the strength of that upper move still providing a ton of points as that was just uh, for it, sure right? the move of the day so far for Hitzig. So 90.33, only good enough for fourth so far She's in the ski it. men's field as that is gonna be it for run number one in the ski in the ski yeah, man is we're going to take a look at where we stand after our first run. So we've got Marcus Gogo Gogan out there in first position with Christopher Turdell in second and Finney B in third. Our current leader Mar Max Hitzig is sitting there in fourth position. And we've got a few crashes from about position eight down and they'll be looking to use the second run to tidy up uh, the components of their runs and really get a score on the board. Well, for sure, Ben Richards, Maxime Chablot, and Oscar Mandin having huge runs that were not quite finished uh, in the way they were designed. So you know all three of those boys are a threat. Guaranteed, Hitzig is going to want to clean that up. Turdell, you know, all of them are now gunning for what they see as the target, which is this man, Marcus Gogan. We will be right back with run number two at the Fever Broom Pro. Here in Fever Brune, we've got a uh, double run competition. It's like a whole different format. I've never had two runs in a free ride competition. It's an opportunity to try new stuff and you know you can fall and try again. You could go heavy freestyle and then heavy free ride on the second run. You could do one run and then try to improve on it in the second run. You show bit more of variety in your riding and it can really mix up the results at the end of it so I think for me um, I quite enjoy getting to hit things multiple times and especially getting to see a different takeoff. I think there's just so many options on the Vitsi loader and it's such a fun face no matter where you go. Two runs for uh, for this event so it's gonna be pretty exciting to watch uh, I mean it's already been a super progressive uh, field and progressive season but I feel like the two run format is gonna bring a whole nother level to that. Welcome back to the Free Ride World Tour by Peak Performance. We are live from the Fieber Brune Pro. I'm Derek Foose, joined in the comms booth with Anna Smoothie. Anna, run number two in the books, and what a show we've had so far. 
Yes, run one has been absolute fireworks. I think we've all been pleasantly surprised with how the weather is holding up. The riders have been doing an amazing job to throw down on the Wiltsy Loader face. Yeah, we've just seen all four categories absolutely blazing through this face, and we are going to get to see it all again. And this is where our big questions, our strategy questions, are going to start to get some answers as we're going to see the riders take to the Viltsi Loader again, and it's going to decide, are you going to go for the same run and try and do it better? Are you going to switch lines and do something else? There's just so many different ways you can approach it after run number one. I think a lot of it will depend on what happen to the riders on the first run. Absolutely. If you are happy with your first run and you don't think you can one-up it, you might take on a different section of the face, maybe some different snow conditions. And if you had an absolute scorcher, but you came a little bit undone, you could use the second run as an opportunity to clean it up and bring it home. Yeah, I could see Erin Sove, for example, going that route of choosing a different line as she pretty much maxed out her first run line and executed it so perfectly. And then other riders, Hedwig Vessel, I would imagine, stay on the same line and do it a little bit better. Although she's sitting in first, maybe she wants to be more first. <laughs> Absolutely. There's been some amazing runs out there, some spectacular crashes and some spectacular moments of brilliance. Yeah, this face absolutely delivering. And for, for those of you that have been following the Freeride World Tour social media in the leading up days to this event, you've seen that it's just been a, a huge up and down. Oh, we're already going. Here we go. This is our start list for run number two. So we've got the Swiss rider Liam Rivera kicking things off in first position, followed by our current leader, Jonathan Penfield. The tour leader, Victor Delarue, is in third position for the second run with Michael Morn, Timmy Schroeder, and Holden Samuels holding it down for the end of the category. That's right, and this is where things get tricky for the judges because they are gonna be comparing these second runs to the first runs that have already been done by the riders, the scores that are already in. So probably making heavy use of, uh, of video review as we get into run number two, as it is only the best score of the two runs that will count. So the riders getting another shot to, uh, to step things up and really put themselves into the mix for the hot seat, for the win, for the overall, all of those things at play as our first rider in the gate for run number two, Swiss legend in the making, Liam Rivera, getting ready to kick off the second run at the Fieber Brun Pro 2024. Right now sitting on a 71.3 first run. All right, here we go, Liam Rivera. I mean, you, you can't overstate how gnarly this is at the very top, Liam having to squeeze past the frame of the start gate to make his way down the ridge top and then straight into it, hopping into his run. Catching some air time there. Looks like he's heading in the same direction of his first run where he took a little tumble and he wants to clean it up. Spinning in there. Well, love that approach for Liam Rivera. So aggressive, spinning above the exposure and now he had such a great section here. Liam Rivera going to look to back it up as he releases off the edges, throws the 360, and another perfect landing for Liam Rivera. The track's definitely starting to have an effect on the riders on the run out. But he's managing those bomb holes really well and looking strong as he makes his way over to the lookers right of the venue. Lining up his next feature. Catching the grab there and riding out strong. Opting for the four line option out of that feature making quick work of the middle section. Yeah, Liam Rivera now coming through this section, getting a little bit of a break as he's going to approach this this run or this jump that we've seen. I have a feeling we're going to see a backflip, and we do, and Liam Rivera lands it perfectly, so that lip in much better shape than it was on the first run, and Liam's got another feature here where he's able to tweak out the grab, so really solid run here from Liam Rivera as he gets down into this lower section where the snow is a little wonky earlier on. I wonder if now we maybe get into a point where it's a bit softer and starts to be more rideable. I think we're seeing a bit more release there, and he's holding it together, riding out super fast so he certainly tidied that one up what do you think well i liked it i liked it a lot that was a really really strong top section and then the backflip was perfect a strong way to kick off and it looks like the body language there liam rivera might be feeling pretty stoked about that one himself yeah less of the shaking head more of the 
stoke as he comes through the finish gate. So we, we have the ghost of John Powell in the hot seat as we take a look back here at Liam's run. The approach to that really rocky, but tossing the front side three and landing it beautifully. Yeah, handling those bomb holes super well and catching some super nice air time here as well. Yeah, getting the grab, ramping up the air in style. You can see that's his highest bar from Dodo, our video judge. And then this beautiful, laying it out, slowing the rotation down and stomping. Liam Rivera making short work of the Vilsi loader. So they got to compare that now to all of the first runs and the judges have their work cut out for them. As I said, we've we got to imagine the ghost of John Penfield, well, the spirit of John Penfield uh, sitting in that hot seat as his run currently is the run to beat. That is our, our hot seat sitter, although John is back up at the top of the face. So we'll see what the judges do with that. Complicated moments to be a judge at the, at the, at the second run stage of the Fever Brune Pro. Definitely feeling for the judges there as they are reviewing all the action that's already gone down. Thank you. Pretty stoked. Finally landed it. Well, you can hear Liam in the background. He is stoked. He said finally landed it. So happy times for the young Verbier rider. A bunch of rocks that I hadn't seen. Yeah. Yeah, the approach to that Heusel Cliff 360 was super rocky. And we did see a fair few athletes kind of take that same approach. So the snow way more stripped out, especially considering the snowboard men were the first riders to go. So they had a relatively clean canvas to work with on, on run one. Definitely less so now. The snowboard men did an awesome job to get the vibes high, kicking things off early this morning. But a lot has happened since then. A lot has happened. <laughs> Absolutely. We've seen four categories, blazing runs in, well, in all of them, and some extremely strong hot seat runs in all four categories. So we'll see if the, if the backup of getting a second run will outweigh the, the sort of downside of a deteriorating, and just deteriorating by more tracks, uh, competition Damn. venue. So lots of interesting questions to be answered here as Liam now really being forced to wait by the judges for this score to come in and it comes in in Whoa. first. He knocks Jonathan Penfield out of the hot seat in the first rider down the face. So that is a huge statement from the Verbier man, Liam Rivera putting himself and now we have a real body in the hot seat. A true person, and he is super stoked to put that run down on his feet with some serious style. Okay, well, that is quite a way to start things off, but this guy is going to get a chance to answer back straight away. As we look now, the standing shaking up immediately after the very first rider, John Penfield with that 85-6-7. So Liam laying down an 89 Will John Powell go for the same and try to add some tricks or some more features? There were definitely a couple that he skipped on the last round that he could probably bump up the line score. We'll see what kind of strategy Jonathan Penfield takes here on run number two. Dropping in from start one there, making his way along the ridge, catching the high fives from the gang. Oh, the spirit of free ride alive and well at the top of the Vilsi loader as John Pau now starts his run in earnest. Cruising in above those big lifts, carrying quite a lot of speed there. Getting the method in, tweaking it out. And John Pau with the 360 approach to, is he gonna go for the Penfield transfer? No, he's taking no. on the pyramid here. Airing in and lining up a 360 out but oh, going down but going in the landing. going down on his back. John Pau holding on there through the washing machine set on tumble as Jonathan Penfield not quite able to hold on to that landing. That was a extremely committing line airing on and then the big 360 off the pyramid. So John Pau knew that, you know, well, I don't know if he knew what Liam's score was, but he was certainly looking to step up his first run score. But the joys of the two run format means that he can fall back on the 85 score of his first run. 
um, and still be in podium contention. Absolutely, for sure he can. Will he be remains in the hands of the rest of the riders in the field as John Penfield going to make his way off of the venue after that tumble. Still going to be looking to have a good time on the lower section of the face here as that was, well, it was definitely a strong effort from Jonathan Penfield as he put down a serious gauntlet and just unfortunately not quite able to hold on and now into this glorious untracked section of the Vilti Loader. Just getting some pal turns in through here. Still going to go for some air time. Oh, yeah. John loves snowboarding. And any opportunity he's going to have to do it on his own on a face like this, he's going to take full advantage. Skipping through the double at the bottom. He may salvage a few points, but I don't think it's going to better his first run, 85 there. So Jonathan Penfield will hold on to second currently. But, of course, we've got still some very, very heavy hitters and a couple who didn't quite have their way with run number one. So we'll see what those riders are able to do with the face today as Jonathan just laying down some arcs here at the bottom of the venue. He's got his mum and his fiance here supporting him. I'm sure they're cheering him on in the finish. So checking out this replay, catching some nice airtime and bringing together backside 360 there before he takes a different approach in the next section, which... I loved that top section, the 360 there and then popping, getting the grab, landing a bit on the heel side edge. And then the front three with the grab. Let's see. Oh, he was just a little bit, maybe slightly under rotated and in a bomb hole. And then he just got absolutely rinsed there on the lower section. Happy to see Jonathan okay after that heavy tumble. Absolutely. The two run format may play in his favor, but we'll have to check out the rest of the runs of the field. I mean, the second run for the next category is going to be. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Here we go, the other side. Yeah. And the score coming in here for Jonathan Penfield, 44-3-3. A little over half of his first run score, so he'll be resting on the score of run number one. That's right, sitting in second for John Powell, and the man sitting at the top of the pile in the overall rankings, Victor De La Rue. We had a chance to catch up with him a little bit earlier on. We are right now in the finals, but it's just the continuity of the season, and uh, the season for me has been building up. Yeah, on this stage, like most of the riders have nothing to lose, so all those guys are gonna send it crazy, so it's one to watch for sure. Well, that was very well said by our current rankings leader, De La Rue. A lot of the riders have nothing to lose, so they are going out guns blazing, and we saw that with Liam Rivera. Now, Victor has a chance to up that score. He was in second with Liam lacing that huge run right off the bat in Snowboard Men. That has pushed Victor down to third. That's not a position he's familiar with, and he's going to want to rectify that right now. And I'm sure he's the man for the job. Dropping in from start one, carrying some pace across that top section. 360 in there. Yeah, with the grab, little nose butter, losing a bit of momentum as Victor may be opting now not for the, well, definitely opting not for the, oh no, he still goes for it, but was just a touch short and then tail pressing over those rocks. That was cat-like from De La Rue. Incredible reflexes there. He's still got his eyes on the prize. Oh, Lining up the next feature. Truly didn't think he had enough speed for that one. Going back three off this bowling ball nugget. So Victor De La Rue, not quite the perfection that we've seen from him in other events, but he is still cooking down the Vilti Loader face. And he's got a lot more real estate to work with at the bottom, bottom section here. So he's carrying quite a lot of speed into what we've seen a lot of backies off so far. And he goes, ops for the three, stomps the landing. So this was the section that kind of gobbled up some of Victor De La Rue's fluidity last time. And this time he is not letting off the throttle as he opts around that cliff section, 
cross fall line and getting over here where it's just a slightly cleaner run out. So Victor De La Rue now pinning it. And it's, uh, I think that move is trademarked by his brother, the eagle or the screaming eagle, uh, putting the hands out, trying to use the, the wings as rudders a little bit to slow down. We've seen Xavier do that on the Bec de Ross and on some big lines in film parts. And Victor learning from the best. Well, a hectic upper section there for De La Rue. Big hug there for Liam Rivera as we look back at this top section of Victor De La Rue. Yeah, that snow is certainly getting pretty funky. And you are right. He just comes short of that wind lip but manages to hold it all together unbelievably. I can't believe he managed to hold on to that. Popping the low speed back three off that section and landing cleanly on his feet. There is a control dock there from the video judge. This back three, beautiful. <laughs> that, was, that was a lot. That was a, a lot of different feelings there on this run from Victor De La Rue getting the tail grab on that one. So top to bottom, there was there was some, some moments of brilliance and some moments of absolute hecticness from the, uh, the current rankings leader. So there's some math to be done. Victor De La Rue can become champion if he finishes anywhere on the podium. And if he's fourth or fifth and neither John nor Timmy win, then he still becomes champion. So all to play for as Victor De La Rue, he's... Uh, Breathless in the finish, and we'll wait to see if that's going to trouble the hot seat run of Liam Rivera. My instinct is no. Yeah, I think it wasn't quite tidy enough, um, but still some moments of brilliance in there. Well, he Ooh. always provides us with excitement. So De La Rue, oh wow, 90.67 for Victor De La Rue. The judges loving the 360 over the transfer and the control regained after he cased that. So a huge score for this man. Wow, what a score for Victor De La Rue. And he goes back to his home in the Dina Star hot seat. And I will eat my words. Yep. Those, those judges, they've got binoculars. They see everything very consistently, whereas we have differing camera angles. So Well, and we I know better than to speculate. Every time I do it, I'm proved wrong. <laughs> So Victor De La Rue with a 90.67, just edging Liam Rivera out of the hot seat. And we are straight back into it with Michael Mon, who is already well into his run and cooking. Dropping in from start one there. He had a really strong first run. And floating another three there, making the most of this funky snow above the Halsell Cliff. Yeah, he had kind of a double lined up in the pyramid section that I think he missed the second piece of. So we'll see if he can go back and actually catch the full nose. Oh, back three off that and turning it almost into a double, arcing around. That came out of nowhere. What a move from Michael Mon. That went... Uh, no, no! Oh, catching a little bit of uh, Wiltsy Loader to the face there, Michael Mon. That was an unfortunate bobble in his run. Yeah, reminiscent of Estelle Rosolio there, laid out a little too far on that toe side edge and just losing the board out from underneath him. So Michael Mon though, regrouping now, getting into this nuggety section where they get a chance to catch their breath before the snow pitches over again, maybe clearing a bit of snow out of his goggles. And there's lots more to play for down here. He is lacing his way down the right side of the channel. Looks like the snow is softened up really nicely there. Yeah, and Michael just opting for the clean line, clean approach as he comes into this bottom feature. Another 360, a tiny bit under-rotated, but just plugging it, showing full strength there as Michael Mon finally out and into the apron on the Viltsy loader. That was a pretty heavy impact, but he handled it. Yeah, managed to regain some fluidity directly after. So now he's out onto the flats and almost home free. Almost home. Michael Mon, glove off. I think he's just picking the snow that he collected on that um, overzealous toe side carve. Oh, nice, Victor. <laughs> Sounds so surprised to see Victor in the hot so seat, but uh, he's been sitting there for a lot of the season. Well, look at this right off the heel side edge from almost a dead standstill and then just flying 
out of that pyramid section. That was such a cool move from Michael Mon. It was almost like a drop into a half pipe from, from a dead stop to a 360. Well, he does have quite some half pipe experience and he certainly laced that one beautifully. And the three, which, yeah, as you mentioned, slightly under rotated, but gets right back up and rides off. All right, well, we see the line tracker there for Michael Mon as we wait for the scores to drop in. Definitely a significant control issue uh, moving across to the far rider's left. You can see it in his face. Michael Mon not overly pleased with that one, a 62. Nice job, dude. So congratulations there to Victor. How did you go up and chill? All right, here we go. Timmy Schroeder, the next rider. This was one that didn't go quite as planned on run number one, so a big contender. Tim Schroeder is always a danger to the hot seat. He's, uh, he's another rider who has got two spots on the podium this year. He would love to bump that up to the number one spot. He's a rookie on tour, but he has not been performing like a rookie. He has been blazing along on his path on the free ride world tour this season. And as you can see on his helmet, he is a certified shredder and he is ready to drop in from start one. Timmy Shredder on course now, moving heel side across this extremely intimidating exposure at the top of the Vilti Loader face here in Fieberbrunn. If you're just joining us, Snowboard Men run to the Fieberbrunn Pro is underway with Victor De La Rue. Victor De La Rue sitting in the hot seat. And Timmy Schroeder with a huge 360 to kick things off. Little butt check there. Well hidden by the powder cloud, but I'm sure the judge's binoculars picking that up. Smart move, buttering around another three into this section here, which has seen a lot of play today. Yeah, you can see the tracks, especially that cross track is starting to get very established as Timmy putting himself in. He's gonna have to kind of double in to this corner of the Hustle Cliff and managing it perfectly now as he motors across the left flank of the face on his heel side edge. Handling it really well. I think the snow has softened up. Spinning another three there and lining up the next cliff on his, lacing some turns there. Solid landing. Yeah, Timmy Schroeder now battling slightly. The snow on this part of the face, a little bit tricky, but he's got it handled. Down here, we saw a big backflip from Timmy on run number one. We'll see if he repeats that. The lip is well established from all four categories now as he tosses it, laid out, and landed absolutely to perfection. Timmy Schroeder really making a strong case for himself. Big back three. Just lacing them together there. He wants a little chunk of this cliff section, which you need to wash a bit of speed for to catch the transition, and he finds it well. And now letting off the brakes completely, Timmy Schroeder with a huge run here on the Vilti Loader, run number two. The two-run format really proving its mettle as we saw both Liam Rivera and Victor De La Rue step taking big steps up the rankings. Uh, from, well, I guess the step for Victor wasn't that big from second to first, but a solid one nonetheless. And all smiles one, bro. for the Innsbruck rider there as he gives a high five to Victor. Let's take a look back at this run, Anna. So 360 straight out of the gate, but does has, have that control issue in the landing. And this move looking super strong, navigating the bomb holes and riding out on his heel side edge there. And then laying out this beautiful backy, it's looking so relaxed, such a solid landing. Yeah, hands at his sides. You can see the fans there cheering him on. Love to see it. Love it. So it is, it's a bummer that he had that issue at the top because the rest of that run from Tim Schroeder was definitely in contention for that top spot. But I think with a control issue as big as that, Film down. Film down. <laughs> Stringer in the place. We're out here sending it. You know it. <laughs> oh, Victor loving the, the Timmy Schroeder show there. 
as they wait for the scores to drop. Tim Schroeder, always an entertaining character. He's a, just a general good time to be around. Yesterday, he and Holden wow. Samuels built maybe the biggest snowman I've ever seen, while the other riders were intently standing with their binoculars, checking the face. These boys were playing out there like kids, and I love to see it. So the judges are doing their work, and the score is coming in for Timmy Schroeder. 87-3-3, so even with that bobble at the top, the rest of his run strong enough to put him into podium contention right now in Snowboard Men. So run two, proving its mettle once again as we've had three riders climb up the rankings significantly as we go back up to the last man in the category in the Fever Pro. 10 seconds. Some last thoughts there from the Salt Lake City Holden rider. Samuels. Holden Samuels riding under the stars and stripes and ready to go as Holden Samuels kicks things off for run number two here at the Fever Brune Pro. This is another man who could have a very strong say in that hot seat if things go his way. He's so strong on the board and going right into the exposure at the top. Riding through on his toe side edge bit of an advantage in this section. Spinning 360 and lacing some turns. Yeah, I think the Goofy Foot Riders appreciate these rare moments where it's an advantage for them as he comes down and let's go off the hoistel cliff, onto the heel side edge, holding on, battling for balance, and then getting out into that powder. Now he's got to cross this debris field on the toe side edge and managing it easily pop in that wind lip and finding perfect transition. Yeah, he's got a lot of features to play with out here on the looker's right side, catching some serious air time there. Some, some, a few wiggles in this run that have really had me on the edge of my seat. And another one crossing the debris under the eagle to get over to this glorious powder field that has very few tracks in it. Now he's got to line up wide if he's gonna make it to the jump section here, which he is approaching on his heel side edge. Big back, he brings it round, looking super relaxed. Beautiful backflip, almost a trademark at this point for Holden Samuels now coming into this low section. Front three, oh, just a little short. I think he didn't quite have the speed he thought he did, and that one has a really aggressive upslope on the takeoff. But he's not done yet, lining up this one here, dropping in, finding the transition, and just working those bubbles. Yeah, just making his way. You can see the roller balls have been shedding off the Vilti loader. The temperature spiking through the day. We've got full sun right now, and that is definitely warming things up. We were two degrees earlier in the day. Definitely well warmer than that right now as Holden Samuels making the last couple turns to cross under the arch. As you said, Anna, that was an adventurous run. A lot of really good moves, but a few moments that had our, had our hearts in our throats. All right, let's take a look back at this run from Holden. I love this approach, super aggressive off the corner of the house. And there on his heel side, he looks a bit sketchy, but manages to hold it together. We can see the control bar a little bit red there. And then this was perfectly stomped. And then moving down to this section, he runs this one out with speed. So a great run from Holden Samuels. A few control issues. I don't know if that's going to be contending with the man in the hot seat, Victor Delarue. Well, just doing it once again, time after time, as we see Holden just looking back up at the face, kind of going through the line. You know, you review it, you rewind it in your mind, and kind of relook at all the... Uh, all the things that went into it is the score coming up. It's a 67 flat for Holden Samuels. That's going to put him into sixth place in the Fieberbrunn Pro. So that is the last man down from uh, the snowboard men's category. So that is another command performance from Victor De La Rue. He is the winner, unofficially of course, but it's looking pretty official from where we're sitting. The winner of the Fieberbrunn Pro. And if we've done our math right, there's another big title headed this man's way. Well deserved. He's had such an incredible performance this year. 
Well, huge congratulations, our new Snowboard Men's World Champion on that run, the winner of the Fieberbrunn Pro and the winner of the 2024 Free Ride World Tour. It is Victor De La Rue. What a performance. Absolutely incredible. Huge congratulations to this man. Four starts, four wins. De La Rue dominant this year in the snowboard men's field and wrapping up the title with one comp to go. This is what the overall picture looks like in the battle for second. So we've got Victor in first position there, Liam in second, Timmy Schroeder pulling it up into third. That second run for the second and third position riders really bumping them up the standings there. Yeah, what a day. Liam Rivera and Tim Schroeder making, and Victor De La Rue making huge work of run number two and moving Jonathan Penfield down into fourth in this comp. So the two run format now, this is where things stand in the overall. We have a crowned world champion with two wins on the first section, three wins on the first section and a win in finals. His lead is unassailable, but Timmy Schroeder, Liam Rivera and John Penfield all very tight for that second step on the podium in the overall, and that is gonna come down to the Yeti Extreme Verbier, our last event of the season, the Freeride World Tour Finals. What a show we've had from snowboard men here as we see this move from Victor De La Rue. Unbelievable backside three over the Penfield gap, casing it, but still riding it out like a cat, a ninja cat, oh, and a wow. Absolutely unbelievable. The speed, we thought he didn't have enough speed to make that gap, but he just absolutely smashed through it. All right, well, we are wrapped on snowboard men and heading to ski women for run two. Here we are live with ski women at the Fieberbrunn Pro, the peak performance helium mat providing the ultimate backdrop and comfort for our spectators here, the Fieberbrunn Pro crowd. We've got a barbecue set up, the live screen, Flo Orly on the mic and the riders absolutely firing. This is the way it's gonna shake out for run two. So Sibylle Blanjean of Switzerland is dropping in first of all, followed by Astrid Chelus of La Clusa, and Hedvig Vessel, who's sitting in first position at the moment, is dropping third. Suza Vitek and Manon Loski, our current tour leader, is the last rider to drop in Ski Woman. Yeah, so heavy hitting field here. We've got a few riders who are going to want to clean things up. Hedvig Vessel with a very strong statement on run number one, the backflip, the big sand off the Heusel Cliff, a really, really strong performance from Hedvig as we go back. So the last rider in run one will be the first rider in one, two. It was a full redraw, so random draw for bib order on the second run, and Sibyl Blanjean sitting on a 78.6 will be rider number one for ski women in run two here at the Fieberbrunn Pro, all to play for in the ski women's category. She is dropping in from start one. Looking strong. The snow's still looking pretty decent on that side, and she's crossing over onto the lookers' right, catching some air time. It's a bit cut up in this section, but she's making quick work of it. Still wants a big chunk of the housel. Right off the nose, a slight redirection, a tiny bit of a back slap there for Sabil as the bomb hole there is a whole lot bigger than it was the last time she went on uh, went off that cliff. And now getting into this section that is turning into a beautiful corn snow slush in the afternoon sun here in Fieberbrunn. Sabil lining up another hefty one and a clean landing on that one as well. We're seeing some fast riding, riding here from the Swiss competitor. She's looking over to the right section to catch some more air. Almost getting her ski grab by that tree. That tree wasn't there on run one. It's kind of popped out of the snow as things get a little bit more melty. Now Spiel going even further riders left than we saw earlier on as she's going to look to make her way down this section, popping over the roller and popping over the glide crack. You can see the old lumps and bumps in the snow down on this low section. It's not easy skiing, but she's looking pretty strong here, lining up another air. 
and straight lining out across those bubbles. Yeah, there's so much uh, wet slide debris as the snow turning into balls and all the slough from the up upper section of the face ends up down in that part. So Sabil now pinning her way towards the finish. She's got to cross this little creek there. She gets across. It's safe and sound. So the Swiss rider out of Verbier going to be making her way towards the finish arch. Looks like she's got a bit of a sore shoulder. I wonder if the impact off the house cliff kind of slapped her arms back. That might have been the case, but she did well to keep it in the fall line so she could make a good recovery from that back slap. Turning the music off as we look back at the run of Sabir Blanjon. So here she is lining up the housel. Let's see. Yeah, a bit of a back slap, but such a good recovery. Straight on to the downhill ski to make her way over to the right side where she packs in a bunch more airtime. Yeah, I really like the pop on that one. It set her perfectly into balance. Now she's just trying to run some of that speed off. And then here she got a little snaggled up in the tree, but no problem for Sibyl. All of these riders, such strong athletes. They're able to just kind of, sometimes you got to muscle it out. And that's where the time in the gym comes into play. Big smile for all the homies back in Verbier watching Sibyl Blanjean, 72-3-3. So that's going to be good enough for third so far, which I think is where she was sitting after run number one. Yep, she is maintaining that third position, but we've still got some big heavy hitters coming down after Sibyl. Oh, we sure do. Here we go. That is a look at the whole playing field here at the Fieber Brune Pro. This is your standings currently. Hedvig Vessel on 82.33, Mount Lowski just a hair behind on 82 flat, and Sibyl Blanjean still holding on to that third spot, but both Astrid Chelous and Zuzavitek Vitek did not have the cleanest of runs on run number one, so they're gonna wanna be climbing up the rankings. We saw a big shakeup in snowboard men. Will we see the same from ski women? 20 years old, riding out of La Clusaz. It is Astrid Chelous on course here in Fieberbrunn. And it looks like she is dropping at a start one in the same direction of her first run, which was fantastic, and it just had a small bobble that she could easily clean up. Yeah, she took that backdoor route through the eagle and looking like she's going to go for the same option again, but a different approach. Astrid came in from the side last time, and this time coming in directly from the top. She's got eyes on it now. Getting a little bit offline there. She's going to have to go in a bit of a strange direction over the rocks to get into this takeoff pad, but managing it perfectly and clean the crowd outside our tent, roaring for Astra Chelous. A power move from the rider from La Clusa. And the section below is where we saw a small bobble in her first run, which I think she's going to tidy up very easily this time. Yeah, pumping straight through that old wet slide debris. Astrid just trying to find a clean path through here as she gets this cross court feature, adding another one before she comes out into the open on this long flat section where riders can regroup. Her head's going to be entirely focused on this next jump as we saw her with a very heavy landing on run two on the backflip. Can she clean it up here? Goes for the backy, brings it round, and looking pretty solid. Yeah, a bit of a heavy head there. You saw her reach for her goggles to readjust, and Astrid popping another one. So already better than her first run. Astrid Chelous, now is she going to bite off another chunk of this low mountain feature? We didn't really see too many of the ski women take this, as the uh, snow conditions on run one were very difficult down there. But Astrid handling it like a veteran, only 20 years old, but skiing with such clean style, it feels like she's been on the tour for years. A great second run for Astrid. Definitely a strong campaign for the hot seat there from Shailus. Yeah, now the judges have to get busy because they need to compare that to Hedvig Vessel's first run. Is it going to be enough to dethrone Hedvig from the hot seat, the virtual hot seat, as she is still sitting at the top of the mountain? <laughs> Little catch up goss there from the women at the bottom. Sabil sitting in the hot seat, just holding it, keeping it warm. This approach to the Eagle, so much more aggressive than the way she went on the first run. And yeah. here. Getting worked a little bit by the slough, but managing to find the line here to pull it all together, riding over rocks and grass, and a perfect landing there. 
Well, the ju the video judge throwing bars at the line score there for Astrid Chalus, and that was a way cleaner landing than the first effort on the backflip, and then just kind of bringing it in, getting a little shifty there, slight airplane turn, make sure her skis avoid the rocks, and then adding a feature at the bottom. Definitely stacking the points up there. I'm really stoked on this run. Yeah, I think that's definitely going to be a contender. The judges now doing their work, super direct and such an aggressive line choice at the top. She had to ride over rocks to get to that takeoff in the lower section of the eagle, but handling it, you know, the ski base is taking a bit of a beating, but uh, no problem there. I'm sure she's got a great tuning crew back in Luckless as they can clean things up. Before we head to Verbier, score climbing, 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 86.33. Astrid Shaylus putting herself into the hot seat, improving on her first run score. and. Once again, proving the value of this two-run format, getting to go back and do it again, but only better. Astrid Chalus, a very strong second run. So that has shaken up our standings a little bit as Astrid has slid into first position, bumping Hedvig Vessel down to second. But, but she is still to come. Yeah, Hed Hedvig is going to get a chance to clap back right away as she is standing in the gate. She knows she's got a few things that she can tidy up on this run as well. So Hedvig Vessel gets to answer immediately. The peak performance rider first after run one, knocked out of the hot seat by the last ski woman out of the gate, Astrid Chalus. We'll see what Hedvig can do with this second run. Dropping in from start one, finding her entrance towards the lookers right, taking some serious pace across to the sunshine there. Yeah, adding that little popper there at the top to get the judges fired up. Hedvig now making those turns. This has kind of stepped out with all of those tracks. So at this point, looking a lot different than it did. And with a bit of hesitation into the takeoff of the Heusel and just managing to avoid that rock, a clean reception for Hedvig Vessel into that landing. Now she's got to hold on. Smart skiing there, watching the speed, managing the bomb holes, finding her way over onto the far right of the venue. And getting that air time there, looking solid. Whoa! Oh, I jinxed her, I jinxed her. A little moment there from Hedvig as her ski tried to jump out, but with the uh, coordination and strength that Hedvig possesses, she was able to hold on to that as she's now coming into the lower section. Should be arcing a big setup turn towards this flip jump that we saw Astrid take on earlier. And Hedvig now approaching it with a bucket load of speed. And straight airing this time. Heavy landing, but pulling it together really beautifully. Looking super strong and much faster through this section than her first run. Yeah, and I wonder with the uh, with the little bobble and issue up at the top and the hesitation above the hustle, if she kind of recognized that it wasn't going to better her run one score. So just kind of letting go uh, of, of the throttle there on run number two for Hedwig Vessel. She's got a very solid score in the bag. Uh, she probably doesn't know the score that Astrid put down, um, so she kind of knew that that wasn't going to be better. So it seemed like she let off the gas there a little bit, but probably sensible as that first run was a huge score for Hedvig. Yeah, a mega run. Cruising into the finish here. The crowd, they like it. Oh, so checking out the replay here, you can see the snow above the hustle is super cut up. So she takes her time finding the takeoff. Goes a little bit smaller than her first run, but super solid technique. Yeah, it looks very tricky over there. And then I like this one, solid landing. And now she's just got to battle her way through those old avalanche debris chunks. And then opting not to go for the backflip, getting the, uh, the safety grab. They're low on the tail, so fluidity a little bit docked. The only one on uh, on the judges bars there, and that would probably be mostly to do with the hesitation above the hustle cliff up top. I think it's a bit of a a toss up sometimes when the snow's so cut up like that. Do you go full noise and uh, potentially have some landing issues, or no, it's just getting worse. Mm -hmm. it's really scary for the boys. Well, there you go. The snow assessment from Hedvig is the score coming in. So not better than her first run. So right now with Astrid laying down that absolute heater, Hedvig is sitting in second place currently as Astrid Shalus. She's looking for her second win on the Freeride World Tour here 
Is she going to be able to do it? Plenty of strong ladies still to come as we head right back up to the top. This is one that did not go as planned on the first run. Zuzana Vita going down on the house of cliff. She's going to want to rebate on that. We'll see if she goes that side or if she opts for a completely different line. We seem to be zooming in on start one, so maybe she's uh, switching it up and electing for a different line. Yeah, the Scott rider there. In the start gate, you heard Hedvig say the snow is getting worse over on that side. That's getting cooked in the sun, but we didn't seem to have that problem in the Eagle area for Astrid. So some uh, some veteran line selection there from the young French rider, but Zuza looking like she is going back to it to have another go at this rider's left side, going in with some aggression. Yeah, it's getting a little bit cut up there, but she's still making it, w making her way into the sun, catching some air time, and she's going back to the housel. Yeah, Zuza going a little bit more on the rider's right. Oh, she's opting for a completely different option. Riding on the outside here, she's gonna get herself up onto this pyramid, up and over for Susanna Vitek and straight off the nose. Catching the side of that one a little bit and heading further over to the looker's right. So definitely switching up her line choice for run two. Yeah, it looks tricky over here. The snow starting to cook. Oh, Pulling with a 360, 360 there above the exposure. So Zuza Vitek bringing the freestyle into the mix here. Catching some solid air time there. Handling the bubbles. Yeah, you can see the pace a little bit different than what we saw from Astrid, but Zuza putting together a solid line, adding feature after feature to this second run of two. So Astrid Chelous just laying down the gauntlet uh, for the second run for the women. As Zuza approaching this one. And another big air there. She's working her way down. Looking for a bit more air time. Yeah, just adding so many features. Susanna Vitek, the different line up top, and now a slightly shorter turn shape as she needs to control her speed for this cliff, the landing quite short on it as Zuza putting it into the fall line right off the edge, catching transition perfectly and skiing away clean here for the Polish Freeride World Tour rider. And of course, with a little bit more pressure on Sousa since she had a no score from the first run. So this is really the only score that is going to count for her today. Yeah, she needed a clean run here to have a, a bit of a say in the standings overall. Definitely the snow starting to look a little odd on that rider's left side. Uh, it, it goes from really hard to kind of nice, and then it gets sticky as the sun sits on it. Well, things warming up, heating up here as we look at the top section of Zuzana Vitek's run. So electing for that Kulwa approach into that little triangle section and taking a chunk off the side of this big nose. Yeah, maybe a little more side angle than what she was planning for, but kind of needing that angle to get all the way over to this side. And then the 360 on the upper section of the wind lip it's nice to see that wind lip coming into play. We've got 360s and backflips as staples in ski women right now. And in the, the athlete quality is absolutely firing. Zuza shedding her speed and then just putting it into the fall line to catch the high section of that transition. That one you need to go short on or you get absolutely munched. Smart riding there from the Polish rider. Not All right. Well, we're waiting now for the judges to have their say. They're comparing it to first runs and second runs. So Astrid Chelous sitting in the hot seat, the Scott Rider here now, anxious moments as she's for sure gonna be better than her first run. It is a 68-3-3 for Susanna Vita, good enough for fifth place, currently in the ski women's field. So she makes her way off the backdrop as we go back up. The drone catching that beautiful overhead shot of the Vilti Loader, the canvas for today's Fieber Brun Pro stop number one in the FWT finals. More points up for grabs, lots to play for as we see our standings right now. Manon Lowski is sitting in third behind Hedwig Vessel and her good friend Astrid Chelous. 
So she is the last rider in the ski women's field, the peak performance rider. A solid run on run number one, had her sitting in second, now she's in third. Is she going to be able to back that up and knock her good friend off of the hot seat? We are about to find out as Madden Lowski drops in for ski women. In the fire bib with some fireworks ready for us, no doubt. Her first run was super creative. It looks like she's heading back to the same zone. Looking pretty speedy there across the top section. Yeah, taking a ton of speed. Popping over that roller now. She is approaching the House of Cliff, going out way wide. She had a really cool approach to this section last time, kind of airing into that section. Is she going to want to get back up onto this pyramid? We saw Zuza's track. Uh, Manan going there on run number one. Yes, she is now coming into this section. And lining it up, going huge off the nose and super strong out to the looker's right. So coming into today, Zuza and Astrid were tied for third. With Astrid sitting in the hot seat, she's definitely done her part. But Manon Lowski still has plenty to say as she comes into this low section. She handled this part so well on run one and once again handling it like an absolute veteran. The rookies on, whoa, getting bumbled up there in the old debris. That's so tricky to ski through that section as it starts to heat up. But she's handling it well. Super strong technical riding from Manon as per usual. She's really got the whole package from Big Mountain Nar and the, the freestyle maneuvers. Yeah, taking her time in here as she lines up into the jump. Laying out the flat spin. No, bouncing out of it. Just going directly over the front. That, has, that landing has a sweet spot, and I'd say that wasn't it. I would, I would assume not, but she's still riding on through, finding, us what, finding what other features she's going to play with today. Yeah, just a quick somersault there for Manon as she comes in now over top of this one, needing to control the speed so as not to overshoot the landing, lining it up, landing perfectly for Manon Lowski. So that is not going to outdo her first run. Interesting developments here in ski women. Yeah, they're certainly laying it all out on the line. We've seen some um, tr big features trick today, so it's exciting to see. Yeah, going for the flat spin there on that uh, that money booter on the lower section. You can see her just putting her hands up. Manon can be very proud every single time she gets on a venue. She is pushing it. Definitely bummed not to have laid that one down. As we look back, the top section, I love her approach on this one. Looks so solid in the air, four-point landing, and just really strong legs as she just navigates those rutted out traverse tracks over to the right side. Yeah, nice early takeoff on that one, allows her to reconnect, and then things get a little wild here in the debris. And this was the highlight for sure. Catching the Japan grab, landing, and just bouncing like a trampoline out of that landing. That was firm. She's got the dins on high, skis are still on the feet. Yeah, heel piece is cranked there for Manon Lowski now. We're going to wait for the score, but I think it's not going to better her run one score. Here we see the score coming in, a 59 for Manon Lowski. So she's going to hold on to that run one score and land herself in third. So still a podium finish. She's bummed, and I, I feel that Manon holds herself to an extremely high standard. So you could see the kind of dejected body language there. She wasn't able to put that one down. But here we go. This is where we have landed for the Fieberbrun Pro after two runs. Astrid Shaylus is backing it up with her second win with an 86-3-3. Hedvig Vessel in second position and Menon Lowski rounding it out in third. All right, so incredible action from ski women. Astrid Shaylus with another win on the Freeride World Tour. Hedvig Vessel landing herself on the podium as well. Let's see what this did to the rankings. Yes, we see Astrid Shaylus vaulting up to first place overall. Hedvig Vessel still extremely close behind. And Manon Lowski letting go of that fire bib and landing herself into third position. 
overall. Sibyl Blanjean and Zuzana Vitek rounding out the field here. Exciting times, a big shuffle in the standings. That is what the uh, FWT finals are all about. We've got more points on offer. So it's all to play for in the finals for ski women. Yeah, incredible action. Three backflips, a flat spin, a 360 out of the ski women's field. And there is your Feverbrun Pro winner and your new rankings leader, Astrid Chelus. A huge congratulation to the La Clusaz rider taking over the first place bib. This backflip on run number two executed beautifully as ski women just bringing the heat once again every single time they set foot. We are going to be right back at the Feverburn Pro with Snowboard Women. Welcome back to the Free Ride World Tour by Peak Performance. We are live coming at you with run two from the Fieber Brune Pro. We got uh, spectators enjoying the comfy Peak Performance helium mat out there. Snowboard women up next. And we saw a absolutely blazing run one from the ladies. Erin Sove putting herself into a power position after the first run with a 90-point run. This is going to be our start list for run number two, Anna. So Erin in that strong position is heading out of the start gate first of all, followed by Anna Martinez and our current tour leader, Nuria castan -Baron. Estelle Rosolio is rounding out the, the snowboard women's category, and I'm looking forward to seeing if she can tidy up that first run. Yeah, Estelle had an absolutely banging top section and then uh, a little bit of a lay down just overextending on the toe side edge. So we'll see what she can do with that. But this lady on a 90.3 going absolutely huge on the first run. Is she going to try to redo the magic or take a different line? Looks like she's going in a different direction this time, Anna. Yeah, she is heading over to the lookers left from start one. So heading for something completely different. Yeah. Maybe looking for the colder snow on this section. It's more north facing on the left side of the venue. And so, I mean, the sun has certainly heated up where she did her first run. So maybe this is a smart choice. Yeah, I think a wise move from Erin Sauvé. And she probably feels that she's not going to be able to better that first run score going into the 90s. So opting for the slightly cooler side. It's still not cold over here. You can see the snow balling up, especially where it's sitting in the sunshine. Can Aaron Sauvé repeat the magic of run two over here way on the rider's right? She's trying, looking out for her first features. She links and turns, throws up some snow. Looking to take a chunk off of this one. Catching some air time and now she is into that cool cool wow on the looker's left side. Yeah, with a nice windlet feature into the narrow part of the chute. Slough is definitely going to be an issue here as Aaron, oh, with a 360, almost sliding it around, but nice and clean as uh, she's back into the couloir. So Aaron Sauvé, a completely different line this time. We saw her with the huge air on run number one, now going for a much more playful run here. We saw this feature below her has quite a firm landing. It may have softened up in the sunshine a little bit. Ah, Aaron not able to hold on. Looks like she punched almost through the snowpack there. 
Yeah, it still looks like quite a firm reception there. We saw some ski men going down on that feature. So she has likely not, not going to better her first run score with this run, but looks like she's having a great time. Yeah, almost a victory lap here. Oh, well, a premature victory lap for Erin Sove as she just puts down a run to ride through. This is a great view of what the riders are having to deal with on the lower section of this face. Now, those balls are soft and squishy as they are kind of from the melt, but it's still challenging as it's a, a pretty rugged surface that they're having to ride over. Erin adding another feature to the bottom of her line as she catches even another one. So lots of options still on the bottom part of this face for Erin Sove, your current hot seat holder. And she is out into the sun after a pretty fun run. She really worked the, um, that couloir, taking every aspect of that wind lip there. Yeah, looking like she opted for the good time choice on the lines as she put down the heavy, heavy send on run number one, the first of the snowboard women to cross the line for run two in the Fever Brune Pro. A couple quick turns there. All right. So checking out her 360 there, as you say, not huge airtime, but fun to see her starting to incorporate it into her free ride world tour lines. Yeah, and then this is things get. This is where things get a little bit sticky for Erin. Right off the nose, off the high point. Looks like she just compressed her legs completely. And when you run out of travel in uh, in your legs, it ends up just getting shocked back up through your body, and she got tossed forward from that one. But Erin Sove, wasting no time, getting back up and adding more features to the bottom of her run, and she does have that 90-point run from our first run to fall back on. So Erin Sove will be taking her rightful place in the hot seat and will wait Hi, for the- Hi everyone at home. I love you all so much. Wait for the other ladies to have their say. So 48 points, yeah, 48, that's gonna be a toss right. out. And okay. run number one stands I guess for done, yeah? the oh, Ross and Ryder. To... You still get to sit in the hot seat, Erin. Back we go up to the top and it gets more and more exciting as we make our way through the second run of the snowboard women's field, this young French rookie, Anna Martinez, has been providing us with some of the highlight moments of the season so far, riding out of Chamonix. Anna Martinez, dropping in three, two, one, drop in. Junior world champion, and now looking to back that up with a world title here on the Free Ride World Tour. Anna Martinez, straight into the heart of it. Yes, yeah, straight into the NAR underneath start one. She looks like she is also electing a differing line choice heading out to the lookers left, trying to find that cold snow. Yeah, this is smart. I think, you know, we saw from the ski women that the, the way riders left section is definitely deteriorating in the heat. So riders opting to choose the other side of the venue for a much more pleasant snowboarding experience. And Anna Martinez making the most of these turns up top. Looking super strong as she finds her entrance into the face. Well, Anna has the strength that comes from being a CrossFit champion, one of the strongest riders on the tour. And going for this up and over here, getting herself into the top of the couloir. There is an air option to exit. We'll see what Anna Martinez does with it. Perfect landing as she is now into this gully and enjoying this powder snow. It's nice to see the snow still moving as she picks off another feature controlling her speed there and just working her way down this wind lip feature. Yeah, Anna Martinez so strong, edge to edge, as she's now in the heart of the gully. There's a couple of line options below her. We'll see which one she takes. We saw the air that Aaron Sove took in the last run proved to be a little bit difficult. Maybe Anna Martinez is gonna take a slightly different line option, go in for that low corner and stomps the landing, landing, riding out clean. Yeah, that was a absolutely perfect landing for Anna Martinez as she is now in this lower section of the face. And this section has been, been cooking in the sun. She's got a little bit of shade, but adding another feature here before she comes down into the rollerball section where the, all those pinwheels have been call, uh, rolling down. She's just gonna look to get herself out safe and sound to wrap up this second run. Certainly softened on, on this aspect. 
And she's got a few more mini features below her. She's going to lace them together for us. Yeah, Anna Martinez keeping it nice and clean. She's got one more feature in the bag, another clean landing, just controlling the speed on that heel side edge as she now can take a breath and let off the brakes, get herself into this clean pow at the bottom. Hopefully this isn't getting too sticky. It looks like she's sliding well across it. So Anna Martinez with another strong run here. She'll be happy with that one. And we've still got two more riders to go. Yeah, and Anna Martinez holding on to every single spot on the podium so far in her Freeride World Tour debut season. She's got a second, a first, and a third. Yes, girl. Erin Sove loving it here as we go back and look at the replay. So really well balanced over the board and catching another feature there. Really nice riding down that cool wire as well. And this bottom feature is pretty sizable, pretty flat landing, and she just handles it really yeah. well. Yeah, it almost looked like she used the bomb hole from Aaron Sove as a little bit of a transition ramp and managed to come out of that super clean, getting the grab there. A solid, solid campaign here from Anna Martinez at run two snowboard women at the Fever Brune Pro, making our way through the field as we have a couple of riders left to go for the second run as we wait to see the score drop for the French rider. Here we go, score coming in, moving up, moving up into the second place with the 73 points. So Anna Martinez now sitting in a silver medal position. Aaron Sove coming into this event tied with uh, Estelle Rosolio for third overall. She's definitely doing her bit to break that tie in the upward direction. Looking very comfortable in the hot seat is the Roslyn rider. We're headed back up to the start line for our current tour leader with two wins Nuria under her belt. This is three. Nuria Caston Baron looking to step up the score from run number one. Dropping straight into the na there from start one. Looking strong, riding across on her toe side edge. Nuria, the first of the snowboard women going back out to the rider's left. She's in the shade here, but of course you can see there the sun shadow line coming into view as she gets over into the section above the Hoysel Cliff where the tracks are hot and heavy. So much action in this part of the face. As Nuria, we saw her you know, it, through this section last time. We'll see what she's gonna opt for on run number two. Got a big chunk of terrain underneath her. Yeah, she's zoning in on the housel here. Looks like she wants to take a bite out of it. Finding her takeoff. Well, Nuria Caston lining up a sizable hit, popping over all of it and clean. So a big, big move there from the Spanish rider. Oh, tail pressing and then not able to hold it, getting bucked. Nuria Caston Baron going down hard. I hope she's okay from that one. That looked like a heavy slam. She is tapping her head. I think she's okay, but that is just heartbreaking to see that was a super solid air and a pretty decent landing just got caught up on the tracks on the way up yeah run two definitely has its challenges and nuria illustrating that with that crash that it it's not just the landing but the run out still has a huge effect on what's going to happen on the rest of the run and nuria going down hard there she's working her way through the middle part of the section bit more to play for down here. She's zoning in on this hit, which has seen a lot of action today, but just overshoots it. Carried a bit of speed in there. Yeah, and looking like her legs just not quite able. I think maybe missed timing on the pop for Nuria. And unfortunate for her as she got bucked. Oh, she is, she is bummed. That's a tough one for our current rankings leader. as She's now just looking to get off the face. There's a big bomb hole there from Nuria landing, pretty much not even with her board underneath her. Yeah, I think, Derek, sometimes when riders take a tumble, um, you want to recoup points afterwards by stacking up your line score, but sometimes you're just a bit rattled. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. The headspace can be really hard to recover after a crash and then going for a very speedy approach to that, uh, that money booter. And so now... Nuria just looking to get herself off this face. 
and toss that one in the bin as we will see Nuria come back firing in Verbier. This is kind of indicative of the season, win one, crash one, win one, crash one. So if that continues, we may see Nuria on top of the podium in Verbier as she wraps up this, a bit of a day, a run to forget for Nuria Castambaron. It was very sandy there. Okay. Well, as we take a look back, I mean, she took her time lining this up, but it was certainly worth the time. Yeah, that's some big air time from Nuria, and she looks strong there. It's just as she starts to hit more tracks, it kind of all came undone. Yeah, and then she just got absolutely tossed there, landing right on her back. Hopefully Nuria is all right. That was definitely a, a pretty big impact after an already big impact on the upper fall, just looking like she had too much speed. And then by turning out to the rider's right, there is a bit of a double fall line there where it drops away. So you, you're turning that way to shed speed, but you just keep gathering it. And Nuria not quite able to hold on. Big cough there. Hopefully she hasn't ingested too much of the snow from the Vilti loader. So that's a 38. But thanks to her run one score, she is still sitting in a podium position, which will be a keeper result in the finals. There's plenty more points up for grabs than there were in the preliminary stages of the Freeride World Tour. So Nuria is still sitting in third right now at the Fieberbrunn Pro with only one rider to go. And that one rider to go is Estelle Rosolio. She had another one with a, a great run with a significant control issue on run number one. She's going to be looking to stack up some points here. And we know Estelle, Estelle has the big airs under her belt. So we'll see how she answers back for run number two. Estelle Rosolio on the Vilti Loader. Dropping in from start one. And doing some quick hop turns there. She heads over towards the lookers left, chasing that nice cold snow. On her first run, she had a little face plant just losing out on a toe side turn. So I think she's looking for some better snow on this side of the venue. Oh yeah, redemption run time for Estelle as she makes her way down this open powder field at the top. This is an absolutely glorious ramp to ski in good snow conditions. It does, however, sit in the sun and you can see the snow balling up as we move into the afternoon. The sun doing its expected work here as Estelle Rosolio gonna make her way over top of this big rock feature and get herself lined up above the rider's, left, rider's right couloir. Taking some air there, taking it pretty deep and uh, getting herself down into the couloir. Little hand down, but a minor control issue. She's working away through into the sun, looking for our next feature. Yeah, definitely taking that one further to the rider's left than any of the other snowboard ladies so far. So going bigger off that feature. Now just controlling the speed through this gully. There's many different kinds of snow. It's still dry in here, but you can see it's kind of, uh, kind of plates and slabs and stuff as it moves around underneath the board. Riders need to be careful that it doesn't dislodge the board from underneath them. She's got a toe side turn here to set this one up. And coming unstuck on the landing there. I think it is a pretty tough one. Yeah, that landing just looks hard. Very firm snow. It's one of the spots where the slough has been running out of that couloir all season long, and it piles up and condenses. But a nice redemption air there for Estelle Rosolio. And now just trying to fight her way through snowball land here as we get to the last rollover on Estelle's run. The French rider having a bit of a control issue there on her landing. Moving through the bottom section of the face. Taking her time to navigate those balls, but catching some more air time, actually. Yeah, popping over that one and then just completely releasing for the long straight line. Got one more little obstacle to clear that creek. And Estelle is zooming her way towards that peak performance finish arch. Sorry, that is the Salbach finish arch. My apologies to the good folks in the Salbach Hinterglem Fieberbrunn zone oh. here as we take a look back at Estelle Rosolio's run. So she goes pretty deep on this feature. Lands well, makes her way into the couloir. 
Yeah, and then just sliding on that heel side edge, the board got a bit out from under her. And then this, unfortunately, proving just to be a bit too much impact for Estelle. That's a hard, hard landing. And definitely, but this one made up for it nicely. And that landing looks like it's nice and steep. And there's like a little pocket of shade there that provides a softer, um, a softer pillow to land on for the riders. As we see Estelle Rosolio waiting for the score. It's going to come in, not going to bother her first run score. So 43, Estelle moving herself into fourth, which means that Erin Sove is going to be yeah. our Fever Brune Pro winner, and she is loving right. it. Woo -woo. Coming into this event, she had a second. Hi everybody back home, I love you Mwah, so much. Big love to the folks back in Roslyn. She had a second and a third. Now she has a gold medal from the Freeride World Tour. Erin Sove taking the win. Amazing form from her. And then Anna Martinez in second position. Nuria Castambaran in third. And Estelle Rosolio in fourth position. All right, well, this is what's happened now to our overall rankings. Nuria Castanbaran with that third place holds on to the lead, but it has tightened up significantly. Erin Sauve, while she's still sitting in third, she is like, she's just over a thousand points out of first place. Anna Martinez right just above her 200 points pass. So Erin Sauve, Anna Martinez and Nuria Castanbaran locking horns to finish this battle in Verbier. Estelle Rosolio still in touch with 12,000 points available for a win, but it is now really going to come down to the Freeride World Tour Finals as we take a look back at this 90-point run from Aaron Sove. Some serious airtime from Aaron Sove secured her the win today. This is her second run featuring yeah. some a little uh, less free ride and more freestyle maneuvers all right we are moving on to ski men for run two Welcome back to the Freeride World Tour by Peak Performance. We are making our way through the categories. We just wrapped Snowboard Women with a dominant performance by Aaron Sauvé. And we are back to our final category. It is Ski Men. They are going to be wrapping up the day today. And here is the start list for run number two. So we've got the explosive Swiss rider Martin Bender in first start position, followed by Oscar Mandin. Ben Richards in third, and then Marcus Gogan, our current leader, in fourth position. Tenra Katsuno is also really up there. He's mid-pack. Max Hitzig, Valle Reiner, they've got a lot to say about the Viltsi Loader face, and rounding it out with Finn Billis, Christopher Trell, and Maxime Chablot. Yeah, Maxime being the brackets on the ski men's category, dropped first in run one, dropping last in run two, and then Carl Regner Eriksson not able to take the start today due to a knee injury sustained in his Georgia Pro run. So we're looking forward to having Carl back in the mix ASAP. I know Christopher definitely misses having him as his eagle buddy. He called it out with him and Rainey. But Christopher holding it down for the Swede squad today, sitting currently in second spot as we look at the ski men's field gathered up there at the top of the Vilci Loader, ready to do it all again. The head space, the mental strength required to go back up after a Freeride World Tour run and do it again. Legory, representative on the Freeride World Tour, Martin Bender on course and heading out to the rider's right. Airing his way into that ridge line, looking super speedy and confident. Work. Working the 360, looking super smooth, carrying a bunch of speed over to the looker's left section. And here we go, this rollover approach. We saw the double backflip from Chablot. Cork seven from Martin Bender. He is now looking extremely solid with two big tricks in the bag. He's got another hit lined up, popping himself into the entrance of this couloir. So Martin Bender looking to climb his way up the rankings. This side has delivered before. He's getting way on top of this big rock feature. 
Is he going to pump off the top of that into the cool wire? He does, hooking up. And a 360 there, perfect landing, riding out clean. This was an action-packed run, and he is not done yet. Going pure freestyle. That's the freestyle side of the Vilti Loader face. And Martin Bender bringing the heat here as he comes down into this low section. There's more features stacked up below him. He's going to line this one up cr slightly cross court. And handling that short transition and riding out with some serious pace there. A huge run for the Verbier rider to kick things off in Ski Men. That was absolutely electric from Martin Bender. The 2022 Freeride Junior World Champion well in the mix here on the Freeride World Tour coming off his first FWT podium at the Georgia Pro and lighting it up here on his second run. So checking out the replay. Big floaty 360, slightly over-rotated, but he handles it so well. And then handles a sketchy run-in for a beautiful seven. Perfect landing, heading straight into that cool wire. Well, I really like this. He jumps up and out of the cool wire and then puts himself on top of this huge tower and airs back into the chute. That is bigger than it looks, folks. And the control there, the technique needed to get himself lined up for this 360 and one of the first people to really nail that landing today. Yeah, you see the Aaron style jacked from the video judge. Yeah, that was a huge run and it's gonna be very interesting to see how the judges compare because our top two runs currently from Ski Man after run number one had a real big mountain vibe, Marcus above the Hoysel, and of course Trudell in the Eagle. This was pure freestyle, you know, maybe slightly mellower on the terrain side, but maxing out the use of every little bit of terrain there. He definitely managed to pack a lot of features, a lot of freestyle maneuvers into one run. That was impressive. Well, the judge is sitting in the bright sunshine here in Fieberbrunn, and they got to get to work now, especially since that was the first run in the ski men's field. Hey, Liam, do you know what they're doing at Monte Rosa or not? Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, so the challenger competition going on concurrently with this right now. So Martin asking uh, his good friend Liam Rivera how things are going for the rest of Les Gorilles at the challenger. Here we go. Score coming in for Martin Bender. 87-3-3. For Bender, so I what? think there's a statement there on the line aspect of this from the judges that they want to see those burly big mountain moves. Yeah, they love the freestyle, but they also need to see the more big mountain NAR components. All right, so there he slots into six, so that is a step up for Martin Bender. Tenla, Max Hitzig, Finn, Christopher Turdell, and Marcus Gogan. That is what it looks like right now, but of course we are one rider into ski men so very very That's much still to double play double. for oscar mandan had an absolute firing run going last time and biting off a big chunk of that rider's left section and unable to hold the landing so he's going to be looking to three, toss out a 46 two, six let's see Robin. what oscar can do with the face on run two dropping in from start one working his way down the ridge Finding some airtime already, looking strong and fast. Yeah, love that feature. Oscar with a ton of speed, spinning into the approach to the Hustle Cliff. Now he's got these tracks to deal with. As this has seen a ton of traffic, but clean there. And now he gets on that downhill ski, the right ski, coming out into the sunshine with a full head of steam into this windlip section. Hopping his way over that windlip, finding his next features. This is where the wheels came off on run number one for Oscar Manda. Is he going to toss the flip? Is he going to be able to hold it? He goes for it, and he lands it clean. So a huge improvement there for Oscar Manda. Using that second run to one-up himself and working into the bottom section. He's carrying so much speed here. It goes huge. Oh! Oscar Manda coming up short on the double completely laid out 
and landing almost upside down, catching both tips. The ever the showman, Oscar Mandan, going for an enormous double backflip and plugging himself into the Fieberburn snowpack. Giving us a thumbs up. I think he's all right, folks. Let's look back at this, Anna. So much speed. And just not being able to bring those tips around in time. He does go easily the biggest of the day on that feature, but it is not enough. Well, he would have needed to tuck that first one if the second one was going to come around. And you could see as soon as he got upside down on rotation two, he knew it wasn't enough space. That ground doesn't drop away at all. If anything, it rises to greet the rider and unfortunately greeting Oscar right in the face there on the double backflip. But he's up and OK. And what an effort from Oscar Mandan going for broke there on run number two. The second man out of the gate and the crowd going wild down here with appreciation for the full send of Oscar Manda. They are loving it. Certainly a spectacular run with some uh, spectacular, with a spectacular crash. Well, I'm happy that Oscar's okay. The snow looked pretty deep there. One of the, uh, yeah, Oscar just getting brought into the finish area by this Fieberbrun crowd very much. <laughs> Catching a beer there. Well deserved refreshment. It's thirsty work out for the Derek. Frenchman. Well, a little catch up there from the French and the Swiss. So Oscar going to hold on to 10th there with a no score on that one. But what a show! He is a showman. And we love to watch him ride. Speaking of athletes, we love to watch ride. Kiwi athlete Ben Richards, the smoothest man on skis. He's, Richards, he's looking to step three, into the boots two, of Christopher Turdell for that title. Doing his part. He made a bit of a tactical error on run one, airing into the bottom part of the gully. He got told by Maxime Chablot. So let's see what Ben Richards can do with that knowledge for run number two. So heading over into the right side of the face, 360 on top of the housel and going huge. Wow, well Ben Richards going full fall line, full throttle. This is what he is known for. He skis so fast and yet so fluid and clean. Another big 360 there, not even the hint of a speed check flying over all of that onto the downhill ski. Ben Richards into the low section now. Another huge cross court three. Bit of a backseat landing, but he's holding it together. Now, let's see if Ben Richards changes his line from run number one. It looks like he's going to a little bit flying off that section and now just electing to go full fall line. Yeah, and skipping past the feature that took him down. The fastest run of the day by a wide margin for Ben Richards. Incredible skiing for the Kiwi athlete. That was a thing of beauty. Amazing features, really fast skiing, technical, and just looking so cool, calm, and collected off every feature. Well, and Ben is another kind of inheritor of that tab key Pollard style cross court, but never even a hint of slowing down. He doesn't like to land flat. You know, the Kiwis, they, they don't want to do it because they, they don't have the powder to play with. I love this approach move. The left side three into an enormous housel maneuver. And another 360 setup for some serious air time. And just letting it run completely. A little bit of a pull up on the legs there. Popping this 360, no pop. He didn't need it as he carried so much speed. As you said, Anna, maybe a tiny hint of a sit down. Sending it all the way over the bottom feature and then direct into the finish line. Fall line, high speed, high intensity approach for Ben Richards. Love that run. So strong from start to finish. And it looks like he loved it too. He's all smiles there. Just Certainly catching. looked like a good time. Well, anxious moments here as the score dropping for Ben Richards. Where is it going? It's a 97! Oh, Ben Richards blowing the 
judges' minds. The Kiwi Rider putting together the recipe for the ultimate free ride soup out here on the Vilti Loader. That is a huge score and well deserved for Ben Richards. Absolutely flying down this face. So stoked to see it. And I think what we were talking about before about the judges wanting the freestyle, but also wanting those big mountain moves. What? We just saw all of that in Ben Richards' Crazy. run. He is sitting in disbelief in the hot seat as he takes over. So this man was in the hot seat with the 94, 6, 7. We're going back up to the top for Marcus Gogan. Does he have an answer for what Ben Richards just threw down to put himself back on top? Marcus Gogan, only 19 years old. A sophomore on the free ride world tour, second year. The Whistler Free Ride Club athlete looking to answer back to that enormous run from Ben Richards. Is he gonna go straight back to what he did before? Let's see from Marcus Gogan. His first run was incredible. I'm not floating a big 360. They're going huge. And then working his way down through to the Housel Cliff. Marcus taking a different direction, spinning into the gully there and getting up high on this wall. There's no tracks. Marcus Gogan popping over all of it. So clean and totally original line now. Marcus Gogan laying into this bottom turn. Picking up a ton of speed. And working all the way over to the looker's left side, he did a pretty fancy maneuver in here before, and he's doing it again, airing out, and then gunning his way down to the bottom section. Yeah, Marcus going for a totally untapped section of the face over there in the cold snow. So showing some, uh, some veteran moves. Coming into here, and it's another double backflip. He's, no! Oh, almost an uphill landing there for Marcus Gogan. He had the rotation around, but the landing was not having it. That was a huge move from the young Whistler athlete. He's all right as he looks back. On, <laughs> I think he's laughing. He's, he's all right, but he's got no skis right now, so he's in a bit of a pickle. All equipment shed from Marcus Gogan. An enormous double backflip. I'd say, if anything, that landing gets flatter the further out you go. And while Marcus is a tank, he was not able to hold on to that one as we look back. So here is the tuck, well, not tucking for double, laying it out for double and just landing a bit forwards, not having quite enough space and going down swinging. Holy, well, Marcus Gogan going for gold here completely laid out double backflip. Maybe the tiniest bit under rotated as he was still a bit folded at the hips as he came in and then just driving his head into the snow. Both his skis just bye-bye. They are off on their own adventure on the Viltsy Loader. We have to collect his entire garage worth of gear. Both skis and both poles shed from Marcus Gogan as he went for it here on run number two. Do you think he's going to get a piggyback from this uh, ski yeah, route? Yeah, I mean, he's on to foot here. <laughs> the free ride world hiking tour. Yeah, we haven't seen the wide angle shot of how far down his skis are. This is Marcus Gogan going for a hike off the Viltsy Loader face. Hopefully, soon to be, <laughs> he's just walking out of screen. Exit stage right for Marcus Gogan. Those skis are somewhere. Prize to the person who finds them first. Well, that just shows you that even the biggest dogs can go down when the stakes are this high. Marcus Gogan going to the moon on a laid out double backflip. And so far, it's Money Booter, Z uh, Money Booter 2, double backflips 0 on that one as the uh, teammates, Marcus Gogan and Oscar Mandant both going down. Marcus now just going for the butt slide, the walking taking way too long. See, maybe he's gonna line up this cliff underneath him. With one ski? There's one of them. Yeah. I'm not sure where the second ski is. Well, it's, it's still out of frame 
for us, so it's a long way down. Marcus now in the unenviable position of having to ski this rough lower section of the Vilti Loader on one. You see the peak performance helium mat there providing a wonderful, comfy viewing position for the fans here at the Fever Rune Pro 2024. A nice sunny spot. There's Jorge Morila. One of our comms experts, usually the man behind the camera, but looking good in front of the camera. That beautiful mustache just really popping on camera here as Marcus finding his way down to his escaped ski. Still not down to it. That ski went for a ride. Got some real travel on it. Still not Oh, there frame. it is. It was in a uh -huh. bush. That's classic bush behavior. Yeah, trying to steal rider skis. Wow, well, we're four in. Five, four in to run two. We've got two beautiful runs and two absolutely heinous crashes on double backflips. So 50-50 uh, right now on the draw for run two for the ski men. As Marcus is reunited with his gear, that's going to be a no score for the young Canadian, but still sitting in second with that 94 score from not run number one. And the crowd in the finish area, extremely appreciative of the effort as we're gonna go back up to the top for another rider who had a beautiful run on run number one, Tenla Katsuno, bringing so many freestyle elements into his run. The Niseko rider out of Japan, rookie on the tour, highest placed rookie so far, currently sitting in fifth overall. So let's see if Tenla can step it up as we have seen other riders do. Yeah, I'll be interested to see which direction he heads. So Tenla Katsuno dropping in from start one and taking a backy straight out of the gates. Could not see the landing there if Tenla's landing was clean or not. I saw a slight goggle adjustment, but he tossed that so hard. It may have just been a little bit of a wiggle. Tenla, a big 360, so a huge start for the Japanese rookie as he's making his way down towards this air made famous by George Rodney and Marcus Eder. A big backflip and holding on. Tenla Katsuno bringing the heat here on run two. Really stacking up the features, just going from cliff to cliff and popping, popping and locking, working his way down the Kuwa, finding the next piece of real estate to play with. Trying to surf his way up on top of this feature, which we saw Martin hop off before, and taking that deep into the Kuwa, managing to link it together with this bottom feature, and he threes off it, but oh. just goes down. This landing has taken out so many riders today. Yeah, that one is so hard. To, it looks like on the first jump, Tenla's helmet may have come off. He just was pointing at his head, and it doesn't look like he's got it on. So I wonder if that's where we lost him for a sec on the drone shot, because we know he tossed that backflip. Tenla Katsuno, I mean, that is one of the mandatory pieces of equipment. So we'll see, uh, we'll see where that ends up, but um, you got to have a helmet on. Helmets are really important. So are brains. So... Yeah, I wonder if you've got to buckle it up. I don't know, or he just set so hard he blew through the buckle <laughs> of his helmet. But Tenla Katsuno, we're going to see him uh, on a closer shot there as we come through the finish arch. Oh, yeah. Helmet free since 83. Tenla Katsuno. I lost helmet. <laughs> I lost a helmet. The first one. On the first one? Yeah. Oh, my oh. God. I lost helmet the first one. <laughs> the first hit. He's yeah. gobsmacked. The jazz. <laughs> oh, yeah, the helmet just tumbles it right just off. Floated straight off his head. That's not what you want. So, that's an interesting one for our uh, commissioner's team, as without the mandatory equipment, I feel like that's a DQ. And then Tenra continuing, Tenla, sorry, continuing on with his run. No helmet, no goggles, no problem for this guy. Down here, popping off the ledge into the couloir, and then this is where things, well, continued to go a little haywire. 360 there, he got a little wonky, 
and then right over the front, the snow there, super weird. And the look on his face as he crossed the line, almost in disbelief, as he just skied nearly an entire Freeride World Tour run without a helmet. Making history here on the Viltsy Loader face. <laughs> so he's just debriefing with the team. Party time in the finish area. Okay. So that is a no score for Tenla. Yeah, so as expected there, you do have to have all mandatory helmet. equipment on <laughs> the Freeride World Tour. Here. So not having a helmet is definitely Still. in violation of that one, especially on the very first feature. So Tenla Katsuno wrapping up. He's going to hold on to uh, fifth place so far as we are making our way through the field here. Ski men, Fieber Brune Pro, run number two. Now we had, I'd call, an uncharacteristically I'm wild run from our current two, rankings one, leader, Max okay. Hitzig, on run number one. Still a 90.3, based hugely on that massive 360 on the Hitzig transfer up top. And he is heading back out that way as well. Anna, let's see what he brings to our second run here. Yeah, that was certainly the move of the day, but a little, a few moments to tidy up in Hitzig's run. So he's heading back into the same zone, working his way into the couloir, and finding that takeoff Change for another massive three. Perfect landing. Yeah, maybe a tiny bit shorter, catching just a bit of the knuckle, but Max is so strong that he was able to absorb that impact. And now moving through, floating a backflip off the wind lip, pinned into the fall line. Max Hitzig now has cleaned things up hugely after his first run, collecting a ton of speed into this section. Lofty backflip for Hitzig. Unbelievable stuff. A little bit backseat in the landing, but he just went enormous. Yeah, maybe a stage one on that one in the judges' scale. Hitzig now coming into this lower section, opting out from that one, popping over the glide crack with a bunch of speed, long, low angle air, and Hitzig following the track set by Ben Richards. A beautiful, beautiful answer to run number two for Max Hitzig. That is a lot more of what we've come accustomed to seeing from Hitzig. That was extremely tidy. Big fan. He's making his way across the flats there. I think he'll be happy with that run. I hope he's happy with that run. I'm certainly happy with that. And I think the fans in the finish area, extremely happy as hopefully all of the Free Ride World Tour fans at home watching the Austrian throw it down here on this face. Incredible riding from Max Hitzig. So checking out the replay, he catches some airtime above huge exposure. And then coming into this couloir, he has no control issues this time. Smoothly makes his way over to his takeoff and then throws that three lands really well and rides out super strong. Yeah, big backflip into this section and then going the Ben Richards style, no speed checks, just pinning it off there. And this enormous backflip. He traveled so far and catching the transition right next to the rock where there's a little bit of snow built up. Veteran scoping there from Hitzig and then I love this angled out to the left. So there are championship implications here in Hitzig's run. If he's first and Marcus is third or worse, Hitzig is going to be world champion here today. If Hitzig is second and Marcus is fifth or worse and Turdell is under second, then Hitzig is world champion. So lots to play for here as the judges, they're they're going to have to weigh those two runs up. Ben Richards three over the Hoysel versus Hitzig's three over that entire channel gap. Huge moves from both of these riders in play, in the mix right now. The score coming in and it is going to go way up there. He is in second, 95-3-3. So the judges loving Ben Richards and very much still liking Max Hitzig. But Ben just edging him out there. So we'll see that what that does to the math for uh, the championship implications. We've got, that puts Marcus Gogan down into third, Christopher Turdell into fourth, and so on down the ranking. So Ben Richards fighting off a massive challenge from our current rankings leader, 
Max Hitzig, but we do not take any breaks here on the Free Ride World Tour. Valley Rayner, the reigning Free Ride one, World Champion, dropping. sitting on an 85-3, looking to better that on run number two here at the Fever Broom Pro. Dropping in from start one, scooching past the security members there, finding his entrance and his first airtime. Looking super smooth and relaxed in the air there. Valley going so fast. Big 360 above the Heusel Cliff. Now just trying to wash off a little bit of speed. Going where we saw Marcus Gogan go on run one. Taking the same line. Tiny bit back seat, but holding on. Valley Rainer now crossing into the sunshine. That sunshade line moving across the face. Making visibility a little tricky for the riders. And floating a three there. Positioning himself for the next features. Where we saw Oscar Mandango. And doing a big backy, perfect landing, looking silky smooth. Oh, so smooth. That is Valley's trademark. And a high speed 360 landing way down there. Valley Rayner with a huge run going. Getting right across to the edge of the venue on the right side there. And catching some more airtime cross court back towards the finish. Again, another perfect landing. Valley Rayner just sniping. Every single transition on that run, it never looked like he had to work for it. He just found the exact right spots to land all the way through this run. The champ doing champion business out here on the Vilci Loader. This is Valley's home event, and he wants to put on a show for the Austrian homies. The peak performance in Scott Ryder definitely doing his part with a blistering run here on the Vilci Loader. Getting a big hug from Hitzig. Checking out this replay. This is his top air. Highly committed. It's getting pretty rutted out on that traverse track. And this Housel, he just absorbs those bomb holes and cruises out no problem. Such an aggressive take on that section. The 360 into this part and then lining up the backflip. You know, we wondered if it would work. We saw it go for Oscar Mandin and Valley Rayner. Perfection on this one landing and straight onto that downhill ski to redirect into this huge 360. Beautiful stuff. It's really made the, the most of the whole Viltzi Loader face with an impressive run. Yeah, really, really solid run from the champ. As we see the line tracker showing us the exact route that Valley Rainer took down the Viltzi Loader face in his campaign for glory here in front of his home crowd. All smiles for Valley Rayner. We're seeing the score come in 88-3-3 for the Austrian rider into seventh place. A huge score. The, the ski men's field, I mean, an 88 point run right now, only good enough for seventh. That just is a testament to the strength of this field. Absolutely. A solid, solid run and a mid-pack result means that this category is really pushing it. They sure are, and we are making our way through as we go back up Finn Billis with another blistering run on run number one. Number one. 10 seconds for Finn Billis. Getting the countdown from the starter. Seconds. Seat number eight, Finn Billis. Finn Billis starting in three, two, one, dropping it. Finn looking to better a 91.6, a huge score for run one, a big ask in run two. But Finn Bill is certainly capable of delivering out here. Again with the butter three in above the exposure of the Housel Cliff, getting that speed under control. And another huge three, working his way over to the looker's right side. So Finn going straight back to what provided that 90s score on run one. The flat three, no hesitation, flying off that lower cliff. Finn absolutely pinned. Look at his pants flapping in the wind. He is picking up so much speed on the lower section of this face. And he's bringing a lot of speed into this one. Going for the seven, the landing it. The straight seven there for Finn. I feel like that was almost tongue in cheek there as he had the blunt cork seven on run one, flying over the landing on that one, and not even a hint of slowing down for Finn. 
as he motors across the final flats here on this Viltsy loader face, popping a shifty there, having an absolute blast. This man just oozes fun and switch under the tall back finish arc, wrapping it up with trademark oh Finn Billis style. <laughs> you too, man. Fuck yeah, beautiful skiing. <laughs> Finn absolutely fizzing for his Thank Kiwi you. compatriot there as we look back at this gorgeous run from Finn Billis. The hand drag three, linking together some really needed turns to get that speed under control before the Housel 360. Running it out across the rutted out landing there and taking some serious speed out the bottom. Yeah, Finn could just motoring and then going just for the straight seven there, landing in one of the holes created by the carnage earlier on on that feature. Finn spinning again, one of the few right spinners on the Free Ride World Tour and then motoring past every other bomb hole on that one. Full commitment to the send and to the speed for Finn Billis as he is rocketing through the finish arch there. A great run, commanding performance. Is he right going to be here. able to Lace step up? up. Big shout out to Oyster Lane, all the crew <laughs> in Wanaka, all the boys watching back home right now. Yep. Thanks for supporting us. Yep. Love it. Big oh, hellos man. to the Kiwi crew. Pretty Kiwi, yeah? Huh? Very <laughs> Kiwi snow. <laughs> yeah. Well, the boys are used to it, and they have showed why Finn Billis into a 90.83, oh, so maybe not quite, well, just a point under what he was able to put down on run number one. Could be the difference between that blunt grab cork seven and the pencil seven on the second run, but again, a huge score for Finn Billis in a field of huge scores today at the Feverbrune Pro. So Finn slotting himself into fifth, Terdell fourth, Marcus Gogan in third, Max Hitzig with the silver medal and Ben Richards fighting off all comers for the top spot right now, but there are still a couple of heavy hitters to come. We did get word that Christopher Turdell is not gonna be taking the start for run number two. He feels like one time off the eagle in a day is enough. I don't know that, I'm just making it up. Which means that we are down to our last man in the ski men's field. This is Maxime Chablot, and these are gonna be nervous moments for Ben Richards sitting in that hot seat, as this guy knows how to win on the Free Ride World Tour, and he had a banging run going before it fell apart on run number one. Absolutely, some huge moves in Maxime's first run, and if he can tidy up the landing on the last feature, could be it could be a good score. And that one's been a bit of a dice roll for, for the riders, we've seen a couple riders land it and we've seen a couple riders going down on that one. So the question is, will Maxime look to repeat run one but finish it off clean, or is he gonna opt for something else? I mean, I can't wait to see, because if that run finishes, the judges are gonna be hard pressed. So dropping in from run one, catching some airtime straight out of the gate. He's working his way back to the same area down the looker's left side of the venue. Now Maxime taking a ton of speed for this first feature with a big 360, nice clean landing. Now the approach, we saw a double backflip from Chablo on run one. Will he repeat? He's tucking for double, landing clean, riding out strong, and working his way down to find his next features, white rooming himself. Yeah, there's still moments of glory on this face as Chablo staying on the high edge of the couloir. We saw Martin Bender air off this section. Chablo going for the early entrance into the couloir. For sure his mind is on this cork seven. Is he gonna be able to put it down? Is he gonna be able to hold on to it? He throws it again off an even higher point. Bang! Bolt for Maxime Chablo as he finishes that run with a, oh, well, with a statement taking a higher line, a bigger air, but finding a better landing there, and now more to come from Chablot. Laying out that back flick, perfect landing, just cruising through the bottom section there. Picking off another cliff before he just runs those skis down the four lane towards the finish. What an absolute scorcher. 
Oh yeah, hand in the air, Maxime Chablot with full redemption from number one. Now the question is, what did the judges do with that? We saw them at, uh, with Martin Bender's score over in that section, not quite as high as some of the ones that had the bigger cliffs as uh, Maxime and Bender. <laughs> Bit of excitement in the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> well, two double rotations in that run oh for Maxime gosh. Chablot, and he is elated Dude, as we look up at the top, airing right out of the start gate, getting things started with a bang. Floating that big 360 down the ridge and tucking for double on this one. Super solid landing. Directly into the turn, and he, uh, he goes a little further left, right off the point of that and finds a landing that works and Maxime Chablot a little fist pump there for himself and he wasn't finished yet still managing to catch this jump with a laid out backflip and then airing over the low section and then before pinning it to the bottom of the face Maxime Chablot with a statement there that he wants a piece of that podium today in Fieberbrunn well, the judges have a lot of runs to compare that to. But I have a feeling it's those higher Let's runs. Another line, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, another line, I promise. Maxime Chablot going right back to what's delivered for him here in Fieberbrunn as he waits for the score. This is the last score the judges are going to drop today. I, I, I just, I love that line so much, I had to perfect it. <laughs> wow. Well, and he said yesterday he hasn't yet perfected that line, so he's, he's kept going back to it to lock all of it in. So the score to beat now, a 97. We're, we see uh, Martin Bender with the 87.33. That was the previous best score on that side of the face. But for sure, with a double backflip, uh, you know, that's going to be a, a, a big factor on that one. Although Martin had the big air into the couloir. He had a little bit more free ride in there, just in that big oh, middle God. air into the Kuwa, but so I don't envy the judges right now, and I think as the last rider of the day, they're anxious to get it right. They're going to take their time. They're going to video review and make sure they deliver the goods. Force. But no matter what the score, I think Maxime Chablot should be extremely proud of that run. Better. Yeah, he's been working on that project <laughs> for a while, and he finally locked all the pieces together and executed that top to bottom with perfection. So Ben oh, Richards... Soaking up the sun in the hot seat. We haven't had a Kiwi winner on the Freeride World Tour since Craig Murray. And Ben Richards certainly doing his part to hold it down for our Southern Hemisphere Freeride friends as these two now anxiously Dude, waiting. Like I didn't know Christopher wasn't going. Oh, so I was not ready at all. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking that run a little quicker. Yeah, Maxime, unaware that Turdell not taking the start, so having to rush it. Maybe it was just less time to be nervous up there. Yeah, it might have been a little silver lining. It is a 90.33 as the airbag inflates for Maxime Chablot. Popping him into six, so the judges having their say, and it was kind of as we said, I think, Anna, the big mountain vibe having its way on the Vilti loader. That's what the judges wanted to see, but Chablo perfecting that run over on the rider's right side. Full freestyle, which means, as Finn Billis has just realized, our winner today in Ski Men is Ben Richards. Got on your boy. He is <laughs> over yeah. the moon, and Finn Billis is pretty <laughs> stoked for him as well. <laughs> nice work, boys. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. What a show we've had. We're going to take a look here at how the day shook out, Anna. So the Kiwi, Ben Richards, up on top in first position, and then Max Hitzig, our current tour leader, in second with Marcus Gogan sliding into third position there. Christopher Trudell with the traditional free ride line, still high scoring with fourth position. Yeah, huge score on the Eagle. Finney B sliding into the top five. And then we see Tenla Katsuno on the strength of that first run, tied for sixth 
with Maxime Chablot, that rider's right side maxing out with those scores. Valley Rain and Martin Bender and Oscar Mandin rounding out the top 10 here for ski men. So now here we see this is the top three men from our ski division. That is Marcus Gogan in third, Max Hitzig in second, and Ben Richards with his maiden victory on the Free Ride World Tour. A huge day for the Kiwi. Congratulations to the team. They really put it out on the line today and put on a fantastic show. Well, now the mathematicians run in the numbers here and we see Max Hitzig holding on to that top spot, 30,550. Marcus Gogan still in second and still well in touch. And Ben Richards rocketing up the rankings into a podium position in the overall incredible situation here as it is gonna come down to Verbier, to the Yeti Extreme Verbier to decide the Free Ride World Tour Ski Men's Rankings. Only one division locking in a champion today. All of these riders all the way down, really throwing it down on the Vilsi Loader today. And here we see some of the riders that didn't make the cut and hopefully have gone back to the Challenger Series. Some big names down below the cut there that are hopefully putting in the good work in the Challenger Series. All right. Well, let's catch up now with our winner, Ben. We're going to catch up now with our winner, Ben Richards, lighting it up on the Vilti Loader today. First of all, how did you choose that line? And second, how are you feeling right now repping it for the Kiwis? Oh, honestly, I cannot really, cannot really believe it. Like, I like enjoyed my first run and didn't manage to get to the bottom and kind of even thought my step up run couldn't compete with these guys. They're all like unbelievably good skiers. So I don't know, to be able to do it for New Zealand as well and some pretty classic Kiwi conditions is, yeah, it's pretty special. Well, incredible ride in there, Ben. Uh, one of the things that really stood out to us on your line was just the full speed approach. There wasn't a single speed check on it. Was that kind of by design or were you just getting loose out there? Um, no, I, I don't know. I kind of, my favorite skiing to do is fast. So especially in conditions like this, like I know that it's going to be pretty difficult to like shut down and control as soon as you have speed. So I don't know, I quite like to just pick up speed and try and control it all the way down. Yeah, almost not a single turn out of the fall line. Ben Richards just putting it down. It, a 97 point run on the Vilti Loader in this field. That's a huge, huge accomplishment out there today. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I was honestly kind of surprised with the score. Like, I don't know, this, this field is like unbelievable to watch and it's pretty cool to be pushed to try and max out your skiing potential as well. So I'm stoked. We are super stoked for you, and I'm sure the Kiwi crew back home is going nuts right now. Super well done, Ben. We're looking forward to seeing you ski in Verbier. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> what a run. What a show from Ski Men. And what a run from Ben Richards. Incredible performance across the board. We've had four categories of fireworks for two runs here at the Feverburn Pro. It was dicey this morning. We didn't even know if we were gonna run. Conditions looking a little wonky, a little seasick all week long. But once again, the Feverburn Miracle delivers absolute magic for us. And we have seen the show of shows here in Feverburn. You're not wrong, Derek. I think everyone's spirits skyrocketed when we saw blue skies what? today and the weather gods have taking care of us to to really deliver a fantastic show today. The riders have done their bit. It's been fireworks. Spectacular showing from the Feverburn crew, from the local crowd, of course, from the Free Ride World Tour superheroes that took to the Vilti Loader and absolutely lit the fuse of this stick of dynamite. Every single category, electric performances, and some big shakeups in the overall and a world champion crowned. Can't wait to see the finals in Extreme Vervier. All right, well, we can take a look here one more time at the replay of the run of Ben Richards, full throttle riding. He said he doesn't really like to slow down, and he showed exactly that on the face today. He keeps it four line and he keeps it silky smooth. This was such an impressive combination of big mountain prowess with some freestyle maneuvers.
this 360 traveling so far, having to open up to stall the rotation out to get it right. Just arcing silky smooth turns. I hope that Drew Tabke and Andrew Pollard are happy sitting at home knowing that Ben Richards is carrying on the legacy. We got the finish area hot tub. The boys enjoying a nice cold brew there in the finish area. An absolutely spectacular show, top to bottom, end to end here in Feverbrew. Feverbrin delivering the goods once again. An incredible face, an amazing free ride community. Thank you for having us. Yeah, well, on behalf of the entire free ride world tour crew, Anna Smoothie and myself, Derek Foos, thank you so much for joining us here in Feverbrin. It's been an absolutely spectacular time. Now, it's your time to get involved. Go on to freerideworldtour.com right now and have your vote for Rider of the Day. All categories included, who did you love? Which performance got you fired up watching from home? Or if you're here watching on your phone, you can vote, you can scan the QR code or just go straight on to freerideworldtour.com. Rider of the day, there are so many to choose from across all categories. Is it gonna be Aaron Sove? Is it gonna be Ben Richards? Who's it gonna be? Some incredible moments out there on the face today from Ski Woman, hugely impressed with some big moves on the Eagle and some amazing freestyle elements. What was your favorite? Oh man, I mean, seeing Aaron Sove getting into the 90s in snowboard women was absolutely spectacular with that huge send. I mean, the elation from Ben Richards uh, and Finn Billis celebrating with the Kiwi community for that win, a first win on the tour for Ben. So many moments, Hitzig spinning his gap. Uh, three backflips and multiple 360s in ski women, incredible show. Outstanding, so be sure to keep watching. We've got one more stop of the Free Ride World Tour to go. I mean, the, yeah, we are just getting started with the Free Ride World Tour Finals. It is lightning here in Fieberbrunn. We're going to Verbier next. That is going to be exciting as the championships are all to play for. So much still in store at the peak Free Ride World Tour by peak performance. Can't wait to see you in Verbier. Verbier. Mountain, the legend. It's time to give it your all. Push yourself to the limit. Overcome your fear.